Good afternoon, Faulkner football fans, and welcome to another afternoon of Eagle football. We're here live in the Faulkner Sports Network booth, broadcasting from John Mark Stallings Field at Billy D. Hillier Stadium here on the campus of Faulkner University in Montgomery, Alabama. My name's Jason Isbell. Carter Moles is here with me in the booth, and our man on the sidelines, Morgan Dreer, will be the third part of our Faulkner Sports Network team for this afternoon's contest between Faulkner University and the Southeastern Fire from Lakeland, Florida. Faulkner coming off a great performance last weekend versus division rival Ave Maria, a team out of Florida. Faulkner won the game 35-13, and it earned a couple of Eagles some awards over the last week as Clayton Nicholas went 25 for 37 with 231 yards and three touchdowns in the game, earning him his third Mid-South Conference Offensive Player of the Week award this season and Nicholas's sixth oh, of his God. career. Faulkner had the lead 13 oh, seconds into Watch the game you know. thanks to a 94-yard kickoff return by Michael Watkins. Not surprisingly then, Michael got the Mid-South Conference Special Teams Player of the Week award for his game achievements. The Eagles were also solid on the defensive side of the ball, especially during the first and fourth quarters when uh, the Jirenes were held scoreless in both periods. Vandy Smith led the team in tackles with 11 and added a pass breakup, and Daniel Johnson followed with 10 tackles. Carter, I know that Southeastern is one of the younger teams in the country. In fact, Faulkner played Southeastern just a few years ago for the school's first ever football game. But coming into John Mark Stallings Field, they have a number 14 rank by their side. So this young team is has gotten mature pretty quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And when you have such a rich talent pool to, uh, to recruit out of in Florida, Florida's just stock full of recruits. And sometimes really good players get, uh, get left for uh, some NAI teams that get looked over by the bigger schools. And Southeastern's capitalized on it. And they've also brought in several really good recruits. One definitely to be watching, number two, LaQuivante Gonzalez. He uh, is from transfer from Kansas, but he also played at Texas A&M with uh, old Johnny Football. So he's been putting up some huge numbers. And he's definitely someone that the Eagles defense is going to have to key into if they're going to want to win this game today. Absolutely. We were talking before the game to the sports information director for Southeastern, and he was telling us that Quiv, as they call him, is certainly somebody that we ought to keep our eye on, and I'm sure that we will. Southeastern certainly puts a lot of yards uh, on the stat sheet. They are right now number five in total offense per game. In all of NAIA, they come into the field averaging 565 yards of total offense, and 340 of those yards are normally gained on the ground. They're number two in the country for rushing offense. They're 4-1 and one on the season. As we mentioned, they're ranked number 14. They put up an awful lot of points this year, as you would imagine, with a team that's put that many yards on the stat sheet. They've scored 62, 62, 46, 30, and 55. Their lone loss coming at Lindsey Wilson, who is currently ranked number five in the country and is 5-0. and oh. But today's matchup has a little bit more importance, too, other than just revisiting with a team that had a special game here on the field. This game will really determine who leads the Sun uh, division of the – uh, of the Mid-South Conference, which Faulkner is a member of, as we've talked about in previous broadcasts. This is the first year of the divisions of the Mid-South Conference, and Faulkner and several of the teams that we've been playing recently are in the Sun division of the conference. So, obviously, it's going to be key for the Eagles to win this game and continue our winning ways. We come into the field today with a three-game win streak so that we can take control of uh, of that Sun Division. And, Morgan, I know that you've got a first-hand look down there. Uh, it seems that the team is probably in a good place mentally and that they've been pretty pumped up to play football lately. Yeah, Faulkner's ready to go today. Uh, they've been looking at them on film, and they know Southeastern's a good team. So they've been getting ready mentally and physically for this game. We're going to go. We're gonna have the national anthem happening right now uh, here on the field. And uh, Faulkner's band is out uh, ready to play the alma mater after that. We'll take a quick timeout and then come back and go over some more of the pregame stats and notes that we've written down. 
We're glad that you're out there ready to join us for an afternoon of small college football. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. It's a southern tradition as old as the land itself. When people gather, we bring food. Good food. Lots and lots of good food. Well, tradition just got easier. Now at Jack's, we do catering. Hand-breaded fried chicken and tenders, made from scratch biscuits, southern sides, and sweet tea. From a dozen biscuits for the morning meeting to a big game tailgate for your crew, Jack's Catering makes it easy. Order and schedule pickup online at eatatjacks.com. Delicious hand-breaded chicken, sides, biscuits, and sweet tea. They're going to love you when you walk through that door. Right now, you can also visit winatjax.com to enter for a chance to win a VIP package to the SEC Football Championship game. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper, official sponsor of the SEC. Jax, all about the South. No purchase necessary, must be 19 and older. For entry and rules, go to winatjax.com. Subject to full official rules, void where prohibited. Southern homes are particularly vulnerable to termites. In this climate, you need guaranteed protection. You need Cook's Pest Control and Centricon. Termites attack the Centricon stations, exposing themselves to an agent that eliminates their entire colony. Upgrade from old-fashioned liquid service to the proven protection of Centricon and Cook's Pest Control. Call Cook's today for a free evaluation. Looky, 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 here comes Cookie, Cook's Pest Control. Do you have an electrical ghost in your facility that's driving you crazy? You know, those little annoyances like a breaker tripping for no reason, unexplained power surges, or the lights dimming intermittently, which could indicate dangerous and costly problems unseen by the naked eye. Well, relief is here. The technicians at Crosby Electric utilize the most advanced diagnostic tools available, including an infrared camera, an ultrasonic probe, and advanced metering equipment to diagnose your electrical problem correctly and provide the least expensive repair. Should your electrical system fail after we have serviced it, we correct the problem immediately and 100% free of charge to you. Your ghostless facility will be safer, more productive, and more profitable after Crosby Electric has put your electrical ghost to rest for good. So why wait any longer? Call Crosby Electric today, 272-2085, and learn more at CrosbyElectric.com. Crosby Electric, the power of positive thinking. Welcome back to John Mark Stallings Field here on the campus of Fawlton University. Carter, let's go over some of the starting lineups for the hometown Eagles as the captains make their way out onto the field. At wide receiver is going to be number two, Jacob McCreary, and number 23, Reagan Amos. Amos, number two in the NAIA in total receptions with 50 and in receptions per game with just over eight. Left tackle is going to be Devontae Wilson today. Next to him will be Jacob Johnson and Brendan Keating. And Malik Washington and Nick McKinney on the right side. Clayton Nicholas, of course, will be the quarterback today with Mason Blocker ready to come in behind him. Number one, Quan Bryant is going to get the start, we believe, at the running back position. The 5'9 junior from Statham, Georgia, and Georgia Military College certainly having a great year for the Eagles. Uh, and Terrence Sims will be on the wide receiver slot today along with Jazarek Peterson. Carter, how about the defense? On defense at defensive end, we'll have Banton Price, the senior, six foot one, two seventy five. He's been a real anchor for the defense in his uh, in his years here. Uh, Zaries Rivers will be a nose tackle. Keith Bryant, defensive end, linebackers Hunter Reed, Vandy Smith, and Daniel Johnson. Nickelback Ryan Lee, cornerback Hassan Bailey, safeties Dion Hicks and Kylan Cotton, and other cornerback Jaquez Bowser. We'll take it down to Morgan Dreer. He's standing on the eagle, and we'll pick it up with the coin toss with our referees and the captains today. Take care of your teammates. You guys know your teammates better than we do. Take care of business before we have to do it, okay? Thank you, gentlemen. Gentlemen, the logo is the head. Pardon me. Logo is the head. That's the tail. That's the tail. Southeastern, you're the visitor. Call it before I toss it, please. Tail. Tail's the call. Tail. It's a head. Which way do you want to kick? Okay, face me. Back to the 
first and second, second half. half. Southeastern Southeast will receive. Well, you heard it there from the white cap. Faulkner has won the toss, but has elected to kick off to start the game. The four captains, Coach Charlie Boren sent to the middle of the field were number 74, Nick McKinney, number six, Clayton Nicholas, number 30, Daniel Johnson, and number 21, Ryan Lee. So we're about ready to put our foot on the ball here for the start of today's matchup between Southeastern and Faulkner. It looks like we've got about just under three minutes left before the start of the first half of the game today. Morgan, I don't know how else to put it, but it looks like it's getting kind of windy down there. Yeah, it is very windy. It's more windy up. I remember when I was walking out of the press box, guys, it was way, it was much more windy uh, elevated in the air. So the ball's going to be, uh, kicking game is going to be huge. It's going to be affected by this wind today. It'll be interesting to see who does our kicking. Uh, we do have Alvin Renteria listed as kicker uh, along with Blake Levin. I also saw Ryan Curran warming up some too. So it'll be interesting to see who takes the kicking duties for the Eagles and to uh, what capacity for each. Yeah, obviously kicking has been not exactly an automatic part of Faulkner's game this year. We can all remember the game earlier in the year that was lost against a ranked opponent, essentially because we couldn't make a point after touchdown. That was the second game of the year when we hosted Georgetown and lost 40 to 39 in overtime. The next week, Faulkner played Reinhardt, another ranked team, and lost 54 to 31. But since then, Coach Bourne and the Eagles have rattled off three straight wins they traveled to St. Andrews College in North Carolina and won that game 38-20 to and then hosted Weber International here for a 48-21 to win. And then last week, the Ave Maria Jireens in a game originally scheduled to be played on their field in Florida later this month was moved up because their field was rendered unplayable from the hurricane. So Ave Maria made the trip. The game kicked off. I believe last week at 2.30, and Faulkner was the winner 35 to 13. We certainly want to thank our good friend Dean Kelly for handling the play-by-play -play duties on the Faulkner Sports Network last week. Dean has done a lot of broadcasting for Faulkner Athletics over the years, both as a PA guy and a play-by-play -play guy on the broadcast, and we certainly appreciate him being willing to step in for a game that wasn't originally on the schedule. So we're all set to get kicked off. The last time a game got kicked off here at Faulkner University, Michael Watkins ran it back 94 yards. We know Michael won't be able to do it this time because he's not on the field. Hopefully nobody's going to be doing any running back right now. Glad you're with us, and the game is underway. Southeastern's going to receive the ball on the 11-yard line and try to find a seam right on the sidelines. Pretty quick run back there by number three, Marky Northington, but he met the bad end of an eagle's shoulder. Looks like he jumped up pretty good, Carter Moles, but what a good tackle there by Faulkner Special Teams. Yeah, that definitely was a great tackle. He showed a lot of speed there and possibly could have gotten around had it not been for the uh, 12th defender out on the field, the sideline, did a good job of containing him and not letting him bounce around and get any more, but he took a shot from that. Yeah. I couldn't see who that was, guys, but he came in like a missile. It might have been DJ. It might have been Daniel Johnson. In all our banter, we missed that there was a penalty called. I'm not exactly sure, but it appears to have been on Southeastern to see him backing up. And the call was on Corey Raymond, number 26. Not sure, again, what the penalty is. But the end result is that Southeastern's got the ball on their 27-yard line, first and 10. Four, right, four wide receivers, three sort of in a bunch and then one-on-one, -on -one, but it's a handoff up the middle from the quarterback to the running back. Quarterback today is Jonathan Pierce, a 6'1", senior from Jacksonville, Florida. Southeastern goes quickly back into basically the same setup. Quick handoff right up the middle this time, almost to first down territory, goes Jarrell Reynolds who was also, like the quarterback, a redshirt senior. 
Referees called a timeout there. It was an injured player. Looks like number 55, Jordan Heldreth, one of the offensive linemen for the fire. Needed a little assistance off the field. He's walking off with the help of some of the training staff of the fire. We certainly hope he's okay. In the meantime, Southeastern has picked up their first first down of the day. I was looking at stats earlier, Carter, and I believe that they are first in the nation uh, in first downs per game. So certainly an interesting stat for them to have. They're, nor they're used to getting 30 of those a game, and they've got one already on the day. Quarterback Pierce ready to pass this time. He's got a man wide open, and it's another first down. This catch was by Quiv, who we talked about earlier, and he had some serious yards after the catch there as well to evade some of the Faulkner defenders. Yeah, he had one-on-one -on -one coverage with Willie Bland and was able to uh, just – Drop, just stop on a dime and turn around and have a lot of space for that. Faulkner was not ready for that snap, and we're lucky that they decided to hand it off. They had a slot receiver who was uncovered here on the near side. So they just went ahead and ran it, ahead, ran it straight through for an eight-yard gain. Southeastern does not huddle. Things are very quick. Pierce, a quick pass out to the slot receiver. Mark Northington got that one. He, or Marquis Northington, I should say, he was the one who actually – received the opening kickoff. I tell you who else is having a fun day today, Morgan, and that's the chain guys. They're having to move a lot so far. <laughs> yeah, Southeastern really is marching the ball down the field. A lot of speed, not only to the runners on the field for the fire, but also just generally to their pace of play. Pierce throws an incomplete pass there to Laquavante Gonzalez. Gonzalez had tried to come back and catch that pass. He was wide open but dropped it through his hand. So it's second and 10 with the ball on the 26. Pierce in the shotgun formation. Jarrell Reynolds to his right. Three receivers for the quarterback. Pierce quick handoff to Reynolds. Play a little play action fake, but Reynolds goes straight through the middle of the line. That was a very good run by Reynolds there, able to uh, find a seam where it didn't seem like he had much of it uh, space to get through, but he was able to uh, poke through there and get about five yards. First third down of the day for the fire. There's a flag on the field. It's false start on the fire. That's a good call if you're an Eagle fan. Hassan Bailey, who is covering one of the wide receivers, Bryce Miller, I think he was the first to know the call, and he got it right. That makes it third and ten with the ball on the 26. Twin receivers on each side. Reynolds in the backfield with Pierce. Fire looking over to the sidelines. They've gone into a new cadence, guys. They're trying to draw Faulkner off sides. Pierce back to pass. He's under some pressure. He makes a pass over to Quiv once again on the fire sideline. But good coverage over there by the Eagles, and the ball sails over the receiver's head. Yeah, good blocking and uh, good movement in the pocket by Pierce. Just couldn't find anything. Secondary had everyone locked down and tried going up high to uh, Quiv and just couldn't connect with him. So on to try a field goal for the fire is Caleb Winter, a 6'3", 200-pound senior. The lefty. Oh, he sure is. How about that? Looks like they're going to plant the ball on the 38-yard line. 33. 33, that's right. So a 43-yard field goal. Snap, winner with the kick, kind of side to side, never really made it through there, and the field goal is no good. So an attempt to get three points, and the scoreboard is still blank, but I tell you guys, that Southeastern Fire offensive front came in with a lot of confidence and was able to move the ball down the field until they got caught up down here at the end and the penalty certainly hurt them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that drive really stalled out with the penalty and had two passes over the head of uh, Gonzalez. And it negated the five-yard carry that they were able to get and put him in a fourth and a third and ten, then the long field goal situation missed it. So Clayton's in shotgun formation with the ball on the 26. Quick handoff up the middle. He was touched in the backfield. but he was actually able to make some yardage was Josh Gaines. 
They gave him two yards, so it's second down and eight now. I don't know about you, Carter Moles, but that defensive front four that's down for the fire, those look like big, fast fellas. Yeah, they do. I was just thinking that about 91. Nicholas back to pass right over the middle to number 23, Reagan Amos. Amos now with 51 receptions on the year, and he picks up a first down. That was just a nice little, you know, out route there for Amos right over the middle. Yeah, definitely a good – a good play design, able to pick up the uh, first down. And Faulkner looking in the early stages like they're going to be able to move the ball pretty well this game. Amos in the slot, two wide receivers for Clayton Nicholas and the Eagles. 15 on the play clock, gains in the backfield with the quarterback. Nicholas back to pass, looking to throw it to a wide open Reagan. Amos had a little wheel route from the slot position to the sideline. He was as open as Morgan Dreer, but it went right through his hands, and he wishes he had that one back. Yeah, that, that's one he got thinking about the touchdown that he was going to score if he had hauled that in before he had actually caught it. And over on the southeastern sideline, I'm sure there was a little bit of chirping going on, a little sure. bit of uh, trash talking, maybe a little bit of yelling to distract him, and whatever they did, it worked. Second and 10, this time a handoff up the middle to Gaines. Gaines battling for some yardage. That's gonna bring up third down and six. Looks like we'll go with four wide receivers. We did have a tight end, Chase Wilson. Terrence Sims has come on for him. McCreary and Amos. Lined up on the side closest to the Eagles. Nicholas in the shotgun. Ball on the 42. Nicholas back to pass. Got a pass. Got a man open on the far sideline. What a catch. And they're saying. No way. They're saying it was incomplete. Man, that was something else. Jazeric Peterson, I believe, was the intended receiver. That might be one that we'd throw a challenge flag on if we had instant replay around here. He had to come back to the throw, and he was well guarded, to be fair. But, man, it looked like he got both hands underneath it. So, it's time to punt it away with the ball on the 42-yard line. Yeah, again, we'll look at that drive, and people might, and might kind of question that catch, but that catch wouldn't have even had to happen if Amos had hauled in That's that right. wide open one. We would have already had six on the board. Chris Watts back to punt. Nice punt there. Retrieved at about the 15-yard line. And Faulkner with incredible defense on special teams. Brings down number eight for the fire, Mark Myers. Antonio Gurley got there first. Didn't complete the tackle, but slowed him up enough where he can get some help from a teammate. And that was great coverage uh, with two players in the – deep to receive the punt, it can sometimes be a little tricky sure. in coverage. And did a good job of following the punt. So Southeastern, thanks to that good tackle by the Eagles, takes over on the 13-yard line. Pearson, the shotgun, and he has a little play action there. He ends up bringing it back in and passing it to number nine, Raylon Garrett, I believe, if I got that number right. That's another first down for the fire, gain of 12. Again, no huddle. This time Pierce is ready to pass again. Goes over to the far sideline. Gonzalez with the reception. Can, he likes to move a lot once he catches the he ball. Does, yeah. He does, yeah. He likes to dance around. And it's evidently worked for him pretty well. He wouldn't have gotten to Texas A&M in Kansas if he hadn't. That's right. Quick handoff this time for the fire around right side, and they pick up another first down. They've run almost everything so far to their right side. Our defense has left. Maybe they've seen something in film, or maybe that's just where they're more comfortable with throwing to, but it's something to watch. Pierce back to pass. Chased around just a little bit. Now he's got some room to run, and he's going to try and run it out. That certainly wasn't a design quarterback draw but he was able to get some positive yards out of it. Yeah, Vandy Smith forced him out of bounds. 
had uh, Smith not come over. He was he was in a quarterback spy there. If he had not been in it, probably would have been running for another five, ten yards. They gave him four. Quick handoff once again up the middle this time. Camario Bell was the running back, and I think they're going to give him a first down. Yeah, another first down for the fire. Bell, a 5'10 freshman from Lake City, Florida. Pierce hands off to Bell again. Bell right up the middle. It's not necessarily the sexiest looking plays, but so far they're working pretty well. Yeah, they're they're just especially with these runs, they're getting to the line of scrimmage and are having someone come in and kind of uh, push a little bit further, and it's been working for them. Pierce in the shotgun, standing on the 50-yard line. Bell is in the backfield to his left. Another handoff. Bell goes around left side this time and has a lot of room to run. Daniel Johnson with the tackle. That was, a, that was a really good run, guys. He showed a lot of patience. Yeah, he had to wait for the hole to open up, it looked like. Faulkner barely had guys down on the front there. Pass over to the sidelines to Gonzalez. Goes incomplete. Morgan, I don't know what you think, but Gonzalez didn't miss it for any reason other than it just popped off his hands. Yeah, exactly. It looked like he jumped high enough and just tipped right off the top, top of his fingertips. Jarrell Reynolds in the backfield now with quarterback Pierce. Four wide receivers. 8.42 left here in the first quarter. Ball on the 33, second and 10 for the fire. Faulkner showing blitz from the corner. Quick handoff up the middle to Reynolds, and he's tied up at the line of scrimmage. Good wrap up and tackle there by Ryan Lee. Carter, he looked like he had all he wanted of the running back that time. Yeah, he definitely did, and he stunned a little bit early on, on the blitz, and they were able to pick him up, but he shot right through it and that made the tackle. as an all-around incredible play for Ryan Lee. Faulkner's defense looking a little confused. Third and 11, ball on the 34. Pierce and the fire set up a lot of times and then have that look over to the sidelines to sort of finalize everything, and that bought everybody a couple seconds. 13 on the play clock. Reynolds is in the backfield with Pierce. Kind of a pistol formation. Reynolds right to the quarterback's right. Pierce back. It's a design pass play, and he's under a lot of pressure, and he's going to get brought down. Looked like it was number 97, Banton Price, who landed on him first. Big play by Faulkner's defense in this same area of the field, Carter. Southeastern keeps getting the ball there, but then they can't move it any further. That brings up fourth and 11. And the best part about the sack is maybe, just maybe, they might have kicked a field goal. They were in in deep territory for field goal, but this is NFL range for a field yeah. goal kicker right here. That's right. So Especially with they're the definitely win. punting. Yeah. Winter on for the punt, standing on the eagle head. He tries to make sure it stays short of the end zone, and it's fair caught at about the 12-yard line by Terrence Sims. Probably a wise move. I, I, there was a lot of southeastern fire back between – Sims in the end zone, and Morgan, I've got to believe if he'd have let it bounce, they would have caught it even closer to the end zone than he was standing. Well, that ball was – it was uh, end over end, so it probably would have went uh, in favor of the Eagles. probably went towards the 20-yard line. How about that? Faulkner takes over. First down. Looks like they're on the 12-yard line. Got a man in motion, Nicholas all alone in the backfield when the ball was snapped. Sims right across the middle, <laughs> literally using the referee to set a pick, and, and I don't blame him. The umpire just kind of froze there. He didn't yeah. know where to go. He went hands up, I guess, just to make sure everybody knew he was trying to get out of the way. Either way, good pick up there by Sims. Brings up second and short, second and two with the ball right on the 20. Nicholas in the backfield in shotgun formation. Design pass play quick out there to Jacob McCrary. And McCrary picks up the first down. Good solid pitch and catch right there. Yeah, definitely two uh, quick passes to pick up the first down. Sims found the hole in the zone and that one McCrary just turned around and picked up the first. Josh Gaines in the backfield now. 
with Clayton Nicholas. It's first and 10. Clock just under 6.30 left here in the first quarter. Score zero to zero. Nicholas waiting on the snap. Play clock under seven now. Nicholas back to pass. Gaines with a design play there. Gaines went out from the backfield to receive that ball. Good defense by the fire. Looked like they were kind of waiting on that play. Gaines only picked up two yards. Brings it second and eight. Yeah, that was an important tackle to make. An open field one-on-one -on -one tackle. And then had Josh Gaines broken through that, probably would still be running that's, now. That's a great point. Two running backs in the backfield now with Clayton. Looks like Reagan Amos to his left. Josh Gaines to his right. Ball on the 28th, second and eight. Design pass play. Clayton going over the top. Got a man. Oh, not wide open, I guess, but I think that was intended for Jazeric Peterson right along the left sidelines. That's twice, Carter, that they've gone to Peterson in a one-on-one -on -one situation along the fire sidelines. They must see something they like. Now it's just a matter of timing, I guess, getting the ball down there. Yeah, and it's also one of Clayton's best throws is down the sideline and kind of lobbing it up, letting his receiver do the work. Uh, he connected twice for that against, I believe it was uh, Weber International uh, with McCrary. When McCrary yeah. got 186 yards on two passes. Third and eight now. Big down for the Eagles. Nicholas back to pass. Trying the same play for Reagan Amos on the sidelines. And that ball looked caught from up here, but they're saying it was incomplete. Not sure if there's any way to <laughs> not sure if there's any way to overturn that call, but it looked like there was disagreements between the two referees. Looked like Reagan Amos had made the call. I don't think, Carter, that the debate is whether or not he caught it. I think the debate is whether or not he was in bounds when he caught it. Yeah, I, I think he might have had his first foot down uh, when he caught it, but the second one pretty clearly hit the uh, hit the white. And I think the uh, referee uh, behind the play ruled that he didn't catch the ball until uh, his until he was in the white. Yeah. But the referee down here was originally saying it was a catch. That's right. Punt there is messed up a little bit, but there's a lot of room to run for the fire. That punt's being returned right now by number eight, Mark Myers, and it looks like he's going to get all the way down inside the 10. Not sure what happened. It looked like a punt that was probably lower than we intended for it to be. I didn't even see who actually handled the punting duties, whether it was Blake Levin or Alvin Renteria. I believe it was uh, Chris Watts, and, uh, and they had that – there are two uh, punt returners back there, and all of them went to the southeastern sideline one and thought that the punt was going there. Gotcha. Left no coverage down here, and he took it 50 yards on us. Well, that's the definition of good field position. It's going to be first and goal with the ball on the seven. Raylon Garrett and LaQuavante Gonzalez. In the backfield, that wasn't Gonzalez. That was actually number 21, Jarrell Reynolds. And Reynolds is in for the touchdown. Pierce hands off to Reynolds, and that's the first score of the day. One play after a big punt return by number eight, Mark Myers. Yeah, that 100% was on the special teams there. Uh, you can't give up that good a field position and expect to come uninjured against this uh, Southeastern team. There's a reason they're ranked number 14 in the land. Looks like Southeastern was actually missing a player. Five minutes exactly left in the first quarter, less than 10 on the play clock, and here's the point after kick. It's up and it's good. So, with five minutes left in the first quarter, Southeastern has scored the first points of the day, and they hold a seven to nothing lead over the Faulkner Eagles. We'll be right back for the kickoff to the Eagles and the completion of the first quarter. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. 
The Faulkner Athletic Department is proud of its partnership with the Fairfield Inn, located on East Chase Parkway. The Marriott property employs very friendly people, has beautiful rooms, and offers a full breakfast. When making a reservation, just ask for the Faulkner rate, which is an affordable $99 a night. The number to call to make reservations is 334-260-8650. Fairfield Inn and Faulkner Athletics, a winning combination. Go Eagles! Michael Watkins back to receive the impending kickoff from the Southeastern Fire. He's standing on the three-yard line of Faulkner. And the ball is going sort of sideways, but it goes right to Watkins, dead center. Watkins trying to make something out of it. He's going to get brought down in a pretty tough tackle right at the 25-yard line. That's where they're going to give it to quarterback Clayton Nicholas. A yeah, decent field position there. Uh, Watkins couldn't really get too much more out of that return. Southeastern did a good job in coverage. And decent position for the Eagles to uh, start their drive in. Hopefully we can put some points on the board. We've shown flashes of our pass game working especially long. We just haven't been able to uh, get the referees to agree that we've hauled it in. Four fifty three left in the first. Southeastern up seven to nothing. Faulkner with the ball. I said on the thirty on the twenty yard line a minute ago, I meant the thirty. Quan Bryant now into the game. To Clayton Nicholas's left. Nicholas in the shotgun. Back to pass is Nicholas. Quick pass complete there. To Michael Watkins. Watkins is going to pick up some all-purpose yards and some offensive yards today. Yeah, the out route has been one that's really worked today. Just not even slant, just a straight break to the sideline. We saw Reagan Amos uh, get it, and we just saw Michael Watkins get that just now. That was enough for a first down exactly. Now the ball is on the 40, and if they could keep doing that, that would be easy for all of our math skills. <laughs> Quick handoff there to Bryant. Bryant goes around right side. He's brought down three yards later, and it'll be second and seven as Terrence Sims come in, comes into the game in place of Romil Cochran, a tight end from Olive Branch, Mississippi, who was in for the Eagles. Now, we still haven't seen Joe Jones today. Imagine we'll be seeing him a little bit later in the game still. Not 100% from his injury. It's really taken a toll on his season. Nicholas back to pass, trying to throw it over the top to Michael Watkins. Watkins was double covered, and he's lucky that there wasn't an interception there. James Swain was the defensive back for the fire. It was a Willie May style attempt. By <laughs> It would have been by all three of them, both of the fire defenders and Watkins. Yeah, that just wasn't a very good decision on the throw there. Uh, threw into double coverage and lucky that that wasn't intercepted. Sure was. So it's third and seven now. Big down for the Eagles with the ball on the 43. And it looks like Coach Charlie Bourne wants to think about it. And I don't blame him. So Faulkner is going to take its first time out of the game with 342 left in the first quarter. We'll be right back to see how this third down play goes. It's a big one for the Eagles. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. The deals at Domino's are hot. Like the everyday pick-me-up price of just $7.99 for a three-topping large pizza. Or that late-night special, which includes one medium, one-topping pizza, eight wings, and a two-liter Coca-Cola product for $14.99. Domino's now has salads. Choose from the chicken Caesar, chicken apple pecan, or the classic garden, priced at just $6.49 apiece. Join the Piece of the Pie Rewards Program, where you can earn points toward free pizza. Sign up now at Domino's dot com slash rewards dominoes with four locations in montgomery including one right across from the faulkner campus and one in prattville well let's see what coach Bourne and his offensive gurus were able to draw up during the timeout 342 left big down for the Eagles, it's third and seven with the ball on the 43. There's a flag in the backfield. 
Not sure. All what. three of them threw one down. How about that? Southeastern with 12 men on the field. The old illegal substitution play, that's going to buy us five yards and make it third and two. And probably, I would say, completely change whatever play we were going to run on third and seven. Yeah, probably. And that's a very uh, difficult uh, penalty to take if you're the Southeastern coaching. And they're still having some personnel problems. Can't get the right packages out there. They have 12 out there right again. Now. Yeah, they barely avoided it again. Snap back. Kawan Bryant right up the middle. Big first down there. The junior from Georgia Military College making a pay on that short yardage play. So now it's first and 10 after Bryant's seven yard gain. And Faulkner's got the ball on the Southeastern 45. Boy, they are having some issues on the defense on who's supposed to stay in and where they're supposed to go these last few plays. Nicholas back to pass, he's all alone in the backfield. Everybody's covered, so Nicholas is out running. Nice run from the quarterback there, not necessarily known to be the most mobile guy on the field. He slid down, and I guess they're gonna mark it at the beginning of that slide. He got seven yards on the play. That was a good pickup from what seemed to be a broken play. He was able to get a few yards out of it. And Second and three is a lot better to look at than a second and ten. That's right. Seven-yard pickup. Nicholas has four receivers. This might be one of those one-on-one -on -one throws to the sidelines. Nope, it's right over the middle to number 86, Eric Reeves, the wide receiver from Maylene, Alabama, which before I read that is a town I did not know existed. <laughs> Morgan Dreer, do you know where Maylene, Alabama is? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> well, yeah, you do. It's where Eric Reeves is from. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Nicholas back, first and 10, ball on the 33. It's a design throw play. He's getting chased. There's flags on the field. Nicholas, I think, is just going to try and get a couple yards and run out of bounds. And I tell you, Southeastern's not lucky. There's not a late flag, uh, a flag thrown for a late hit there. Yeah, the flag that was thrown, I think that's in the range of a holding or a block in the back, some sort of blocking infraction on Faulkner. Faulkner looks like it's backing up. They called it on Malik Washington. 6'3", 280-pound junior lineman. If I was throwing a flag on somebody that big, I'd throw it and say it was on somebody else, I think. <laughs> or tell them the other referee threw it. It's a big fella from Santa Clara, California. Yeah, definitely a costly penalty here, the first and 20. But our passing game has been working pretty well going downfield. We got to get it to the 23-yard line. Quick pass on the outside there. Jazeric Peterson with a great catch. Nicholas was hammered after right. that throw, and I think that flag's going to be rough in the quarterback, don't you think, Carter? Yeah, absolutely. How about that? Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, thanks to that big catch by Peterson. That's an awful lot of yards on one play. Clayton a little slow, but doesn't necessarily look like it's going to impede his forward progress going forward. Clock rolling now, under two minutes left in the first quarter. Eagles are going to have the ball first and 10 on the 13-yard line. Quan Bryant in the backfield with Nicholas. Jazeric Peterson with a big catch there. He's the wide receiver lined up on the far left sideline. It's a handoff up the middle to Bryant. Bryant running downhill as he so often does. The helmet came off for one of Southeastern's players. I believe that's number 56, Josh Schulte. He'll have to come off for a play. Ball now on the 10-yard line. 
we can get a first down at the three. Peterson, the lone wide receiver that's sort of in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and now he's bunching up toward the box too. Nicholas has the ball, waiting, looking, throwing to the corner of the end zone. It was another double coverage throw. This time Terrence Sims was the closest eagle. It was thrown out of bounds. Really nobody was going to be able to catch it. And, you know, I want to wonder, Carter, if that's one of those plays where Clayton's throwing it to where nobody can catch it in hopes there might be some sort of crazy penalty called down in the corner for pass interference or something like that. But That's possible, but also uh, it could be just there's nothing going on this play. Don't want to risk it. You're this close to the end zone. You don't want to try and force anything, make it happen. Yeah. You don't want to turn the ball over on the 10, down seven points. Third and seven, big down now. Clayton in the backfield. He's back to pass. He's going to take off and run it. And he makes it to the five-yard line. A big decision. And it looks like we're bringing out the uh, field goal unit right now. But we could theoretically run out the clock and think over this a little bit more if we wanted to go for it. But in a game like this, I think the right decision is to take your points. Don't know if they're going to get it in before the end of the first. Game clock's at 10 right now. 16 left on the play clock. Ryan Curran out for the field goal attempt in the bright yellow shoes. Monk is to snap. Khalil Pope to hold. Kick is up, and it bounces off the right upright. Didn't even think they got it off before the end of the quarter, but apparently they did. And Curran misses the field goal attempt for Faulkner. So Southeastern will take over at the beginning of the second quarter, 94 yards away from Paydirt. No, that's not true because it was a missed field goal. So it'll be less than that. We'll see where they start when we get back. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or even for just a quick snack any time of the day, a popular Faulkner spot is the Chick-fil-A located in East Del Mall. It's open from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., and it's located just down the road from the Faulkner campus. And the Chick-fil-A at East Del Mall is always looking for energetic Faulkner students to work at their location. Have a great get-together at the office, but not enough time to pick up the food? No problem with Chick-fil-A at East Del Mall. They're more than happy to bring it to you. Give Jason a call at 334-272-1411 today. He'll be happy to serve you. Do you know what? Little wildcat formation here for the fire. Raylon Garrett gets the ball. Quick handoff to Gonzalez, I believe. That was an interesting offensive setup for them. Yeah, I guess they weren't confident with uh, with what Pierce had been doing, and they decided to bring in uh, Garrett, who seems to, uh, with the play call so far, he seems to be bringing in a little bit more of a run threat yeah. option than um, than his counterpart did. Yeah, I thought Garrett had been playing a little running back. That's why I said wild card, uh, wildcat formation. But really, he's listed on the depth chart as a quarterback. Six foot four junior from Lake Wells, Florida. Nice crossing pattern defense there for the Eagles on that last play. Garrett sailed over his intended receiver. So very quickly it's third and 11 with the ball on the 19, I believe. Looks like Faulkner jumped off sides. Garrett thinks he's got a free play. He's certainly running. Trying to throw downfield, I believe that he was just trying to get rid of that ball. His intended receiver was Bryce Miller. But I have a feeling they're going to get five yards back. It was Keith Bryant who was charged with that infraction. Keith, a recent transfer, as we've talked about from Florida State University. Southeastern had 19 offensive plays for 106 yards in the first quarter. Faulkner, on the other hand, had more offensive plays, one more, 20, but had fewer yardage with 89. 
been a very even game so far, the difference being that punt return. That's right. Setting up for an easy touchdown. Reynolds with the pitch and catch from Garrett. Jarrell Reynolds had a lot of running back duties today as well. Came out on a little wheel route to receive that pass and pick up another Southeastern first down. What do you think the idea is about swapping the quarterbacks? Yeah, I don't know. It might just be trying something new to throw Faulkner's defense off. These guys are certainly fast. Like that play action right there, I believe that uh, Faulkner sort of bit on the fact that Garrett had handed it off to Jarrell Reynolds when indeed he had kept it for himself. Garrett right up the middle. Picks up a couple at second and four now. This time he hangs on to it and Faulkner stays home. He passes it out to Simeon Mitchell. Ryan Lee got there first. A little bit of help from Kylan Cotton on the tackle. It's an interesting setup. Simeon Mitchell is lined up directly to the quarterback's left. Jarrell Reynolds directly to the quarterback's right. Any of the three are a threat to run or catch. And so it, I, maybe you'd call it a read option. I'm not sure, but they've certainly got options going in the backfield on this third and five play. Looks like it was des designed pass play. And the ball is slapped out of the quarterback's hands. But they actually had blown it dead. I thought he was sacked back there. And they're calling it an incomplete pass. Great defense there by the Faulkner defensive front. And it's, it's, I, go ahead, Card. I, I guess they were ruling that his hand was uh, going forward on the throw. It looked like it just got knocked out from behind and that's that he right. hadn't released it. But a little bit of a tuck Tom rule Brady, situation yeah, there. Right. So Southeastern now back to punt. But Faulkner is going to take a quick timeout and think about it. And we're going to take one as well. 12.33 left in the first half. You're listening to Faulkner football on FSN. From office lunch catering to home parties, Jason's Deli has you covered. And everybody knows that the best salad bar in town is located at Jason's Deli. More items to choose from, allowing a Jason's Deli salad to truly be a meal. Located on the bypass just down from Best Buy, Jason's Deli has a menu that highlights their passion for fresh and delicious foods. And Jason's Deli is always happy to deliver. Give them a call today at 334-409-9890. That's 334-409-9890, Jason's Deli. Terrence Sims back to receive the punt. He's standing on the 25-yard line. That punt was almost blocked. The punter did fall down. No flag on the play. Sims fair caught the ball on the 29. A little bit of yipping and yapping on another side of the field. It looked like Hassan Bailey and... Number 36 for Southeastern, that's Avion Brown. Uh, gotten a little bit of a, a battle. Brown is limping off the field, and Bailey was getting very excited coming off of it. Yeah, I don't think he knew that, that the other guy was actually injured. Brown didn't really show it until he got closer to the Southeastern side. But, yeah, he's, he's actually laying down, getting looked at by the trainer now, I believe. So, certainly hope he's doing okay. Looks like he's running it off. Joe Jones in the backfield now. Clayton with a quick pass on the left side that almost got tipped or intercepted. But Jazeric Peterson ends up bringing it down. I tell you, they they knew that play was coming, did the Southeastern defense. They just couldn't do anything about it. Quick throw from the quarterback made it happen. And it's second down and six. And a great catch by Peterson, sure too. Sure was. That's a very challenging catch. And it'll only go down for four yards in the stat book. But that was a great catch. Nicholas. Hands it off to Jones. Jones trying to bounce to the outside, and he'll make it to the sideline. Jones's first carry of the day, if I am remembering correctly. Yeah, I believe so. It's third and two now. 
Yeah, it was his first carry of the day. Nicholas, another handoff to Jones. Jones trying to get to the first down marker. I'm not sure he's got it. It's going to depend on the spot, and I think he's a little short. Jones needed two. They're going to give him one, maybe. So Faulkner's got a decision to make. It's fourth and long, a long one. Nicholas looks sort of uh, disheartened to see that Chris Watts is out on the field to punt the ball away. It seems like it's going to be a defensive game, guys. So, I mean, it's not that big of a deal that we're having to punt here. Interesting decision from Southeastern, only putting one punt returner out back uh, this time when two seem to work really well as it confused the Faulkner coverage team. Mark Myers, who had the big run back last time, is that lone receiver ready to get the punt. It goes just over his head, but he's there to catch it, and he goes down. Good tackling there. Luckily, he didn't get a late hit call. He fumbled that football, guys. Oh, I didn't see right, that. He fell right on top of it. I think Vashawn Jackson got there first, number 28. It was a tough catch. You know, Morgan from up here, it looked like he had to kind of go back over his right shoulder a little bit. He did make the catch, but uh, it certainly threw his trajectory and his ability to accelerate off. It's going to make it first and 10 with the ball on the 21. Pierce back in at quarterback for the fire. Now I'm really confused on what they're potentially doing, but they've certainly got two options, and I don't blame them for taking advantage of that. Pierce with the quarterback keep on that play. Maybe a little zone read option that Pierce had. Jarrell Reynolds was in the backfield with him. We've got an injured eagle on the field. It's Kylan Cotton. Yeah, Kylan Cotton. Cotton, the junior defensive back from Spanish Fort, Alabama. Trainers are out looking at him. Morgan, can you tell what they're looking at? Is it a hand or? Uh, looks like it could be uh, either hand. Yeah, he's holding his hand. It could be um, shoulder, some kind of upper extremity. Yeah, I think he got a dislocated shoulder. And if you are itching to watch something that will make you queasy, watch him pop it back in here in a minute. He's kind of kneeled over or, or, or hunched over, I guess, that shoulder a little bit, trying to take the pressure off of it. I may be wrong. Certainly hope he gets better quickly. Pierce with the handoff to Reynolds this time. Wasn't Reynolds, actually, it was Camario Bell this time in the backfield. Brings up third and four for the fire. Pierce, another handoff to Bell. Bell picks up a first down before he's brought down at the 37. Yeah, several Eagles had an opportunity to bring him down, but none of them were able to. Deion Hicks lost his helmet on that play. Has to come out for one. Fire with another quick setup. Faulkner almost had 12 men on the field. Pierce back to pass this time. And going back and getting the ball is number five, Bryce Miller. Probably the longest completion, certainly in the air, for Pierce all day. Puts the fire in Eagle territory, 40 yards away from a touchdown. Pierce again ready to pass. This time it goes to Gonzalez along the right sideline. He's able to evade a couple of would-be tacklers. He certainly seems skilled at that. He's got a, a good braking system. He can stop on a dime, that's for sure. Yeah, he definitely can. And I mean, minus the one drop, he's shown some pretty good hands too. He's a, a dangerous receiver. But we're covering them a lot with the one-on-one. -on -one. It'll be interesting to see if we adjust that at all or if we continue to stick with it. First and 10 from the 29, Bell with the handoff goes right up the middle. 
tackle made by number 54, Austin Morrison. Right back to it is the fire offense. Second and four on that play. Bell touched in the backfield, driven back, eventually put down to the ground by Zaris Rivers. Good tackle there by number 99. So it's going to be third and a long one with 8.29, 8.28 left in the first half. Pierce is going to be in there at quarterback. Reynolds to his immediate left. Four receivers for the fire, and it's Bell right up the middle, and it looks like he's got the first down, although he was brought down from behind. I think he had already made enough forward progress, and the referees agree. So now it's first and 10. I believe they've got the ball on the 18-yard line. Yeah, Faulkner needs a big stop here uh, to try and get some momentum going. Pierce back to pass, throws it over to Reynolds. Reynolds was the running back who had gone out on a route after the coverage had sort of collapsed. Reynolds was wide open, Carter, but basically he just kind of bobbled it while trying to turn around and run for the end zone. Yeah, sometimes the simple catches are the ones that are most difficult to make because you overthink it. Second and 10 from the 18. Pierce in the shotgun. Jarrell Reynolds on his left. Four, three receivers, excuse me, for the fire. Reynolds hands off to Bell right up the middle. Bell goes around right side. And again, these aren't the flashiest runs you've ever seen, but there's none of this stopping them at the line of scrimmage, stopping them behind the line of scrimmage. They're getting yardage in five, six-yard increments. Yeah, he showed good patience there, waiting for the hole to uh, develop, and he took it. Pierce back to pass on third down. That was an interesting play. The pass was complete to Adam Toombs, a 6-5 tight end from Miami. It looked like that he was going to hand it off. Pierce was going to hand it off to Jarrell Reynolds. He fakes the handoff, throws it to the tight end. They're going for it on fourth and one from the nine. Big down here, Pierce in the shotgun, hands it off to Bell. Bell goes around right side and marches into the end zone. So good call there by the fire. Didn't even think about going for a field goal. They've already missed one field goal on the day, as has the Eagles. And on our fourth and one, we kick a field goal and miss it. On their fourth and one, they pick up a touchdown. That's, and that's, that could be the difference in this game today. 6.56 left in the first half. The kick is up and good, and now the score stands 14 to nothing. The number 14 ranked fire have a two touchdown lead over the hometown Eagles. So far the trip from Lakeland certainly been worth it for these fire fans in the visiting stands. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. When you want it, just come and get it. Hot and ready pizza. Little Caesars, you want it hot. You want it ready. Hot and ready pizza. Little Caesars. Walk in, walk out with a large $5 hot and ready pepperoni pizza from Little Caesars. When you want it, just come and get it. Hot and ready pizza. Little Caesars, come on and get it now. Pizza, pizza. The coach. Watkins back to receive the kickoff, standing on the three. Watkins lets it bounce in front of him, but he picks it up and he goes straight ahead, trying to make something out of it, and he's going to be brought down just over the 20. Watkins will return to the 20. So Faulkner will start. With 6.50 left in the first half, first and 10 on their own 23. Morgan, are you able to uh, see Kylan at all? Uh, no, I'm not able to see him. Um, I don't see anybody injured down here on the sideline. Josh Gaines in the backfield with quarterback Clay Nicholas. Three receivers. 
Clock moving. Whoa, brother. When you watch that play, you're going to know we were – it was really close to being a pick six. Nicholas tried to throw a little – I don't even want to say screen pass to Josh Gaines, and it was broken up by a Southeastern fire defender who got a big paw on it, frankly. Southeastern claiming that maybe the ball was a, a lateral or backwards – and then they recovered in the end zone and claiming that they should have a touchdown from it. Four receivers now for Clayton. Back to pass right over the middle. Intended, I assume, for number 80, Terrence Sims. But went way over his head. Yeah, that was another poor decision. Had double coverage and had another safety hawking in uh, next to him. Another one that he's lucky wasn't picked off. So that brings up very quickly a third down. Only 24 seconds have come off the clock. Excuse me, 14 seconds have come off the clock in this set of downs. Big pitch and catch there to Jacob McCrary. McCrary broke free from a defender along the southeastern sideline and created really about three or four yards of separation at just the right time. Carter, that was a big play for Clayton, especially after the last two throws he's had. Uh, that was one of those plays, uh, one of those throws where you just throw it up there and trust your receiver's going to be there on time. And he was. Nicholas with a flea flicker. Back to Clayton. It's wide open. Is Terrence Sims, and he dances into the end zone. That was a beautiful, beautiful play. A double flea flicker. Handed it off to, I believe it was Josh Gaines, who then handed it off to Amos, who was on the in the round, pitched it backwards, and absolutely no one was around Terrence Sims. Drawn to perfection, executed to perfection, great play. And hopefully that will be a huge momentum swing wow. for the Eagles. You know, Faulkner's not necessarily known for its strict plays, but that one right there couldn't have been drawn up any better. Terrence Sims, and there was nobody around him for 25 yards. Point after's up. And it's good. Curran gets it through the uprights. And so just like that, it looked like Faulkner was going to possibly have to punt it back on their side of the field. A quick catch by Jacob McCreary. And then a nice little flea flicker trick play. Touchdown pass to Terrence Sims. And with 6-11 left, Faulkner's down 7, 14-7 against the Southeastern Fire. We'll come back for the kickoff. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. The coast is here. Wharf Casual Seafood is a family-friendly restaurant serving high-quality, fresh seafood at a great value. Let us cater to your needs. We offer both formal and casual catering options, perfect for events like weddings, anniversaries, or even office parties. We're conveniently located near the Faulkner campus at the corner of Atlanta Highway and Perry Hill Road. Visit us online at wharfcasualseafood.com or give us a call at 334-676-3200. Score now 14 to seven after the Faulkner touchdown. Kickoff's a little bit short. Southeastern's gonna receive it at the 15 and take off running. And it's the very tough to tackle, Laquavante Gonzalez. He scampers all the way to the 35. And that's where the fire will take over, not sure if quarterback duties will fall this time to Jonathan Pierce or to Raylon Garrett. Looks like Pierce is coming out. Guys, I still don't see Colin Cotton down here on the sideline or on the field, so definitely going to have to ask Charlie Bourne about that at halftime. I think he might be sitting down here almost in front of the coach's box on the bench. Looked like they might have been working on his shoulder maybe trying to pop it into place or something earlier. I don't know. Pierce in the shotgun. Quick handoff up the middle. Vandy Good Smith tackle. got back there. Yeah. That play's worked a lot for the fire today. But great tackle there by Vandy Smith. Kamario Bell was the running back. 
Bell, one knee on the turf, just kind of catching his breath, I guess. Hopefully he's not injured. The fire trainers are out. Couple more big uh, Faulkner athletic events happening today. After this game at 5.30, the Faulkner women's soccer team will be taking on Bethel and the men will follow after. The men coming off of a big, uh, important team win against Martin Methodist Thursday night, one nothing, thanks to an own goal. And uh, I'll be up here in the booth for both of those games. So we hope uh, if you are watching that you'll tune in for those or even try and make it out to the uh, to the field to watch and support the Eagles. I think uh, yeah, they're taking Bell off the field. I think he might have uh, thrown up on the field. Looks like they were uh, spraying down that area. How about that? You know, not to be crude, but I wonder if Bandy Smith's like pretty extra excited. He tackled somebody <laughs> so hard they – had to throw up, so certainly hope Bell's okay. That is not something you want to play with. Not at all. Pearson the shotgun, quick handoff. Oh, he keeps it this time, and he's going to regret that. Big takedown by Ryan Lee, Whoa. and then we throw the flag. That's that is awful. That, that's guys. a bush league call, honestly. That is a extreme cop out by the ref. Gave them a first down. Ryan Lee's just trying to get over him. Why is he calling a taunting on this? That's terrible. Extending the drive on a call like that is absolutely shameful. Guys, these coaches on the sideline are erate down here. That is an absolutely shameful call. You saw the call, unsportsmanlike. Big tackle there. Totally erased by the penalty. Pierce with a pass along the sidelines. Another flag on the field. That's coming back for holding. At least it better be. Otherwise, Coach Boren might get arrested for assault if they call this on us. They called that one on Adam Toombs. Big tight end that caught a pass earlier in the game. Bryce Miller, the wide receiver for Southeastern, caught the pass along the Southeastern sidelines. But guys, I didn't see – I don't know how y'all saw it from up there, but I didn't see anything from down here, didn't hear anything that made them suggest that sh they should have thrown a personal foul. First and 20 now after the penalty. Quick handoff right up the middle. Big run there by Jarrell Reynolds. And, Morgan, to answer your question, I think what they called was uh, Ryan, after he made the sack, got up and he was stepping over him and clapping. And the referee – it's thinks that that's taunting evidently. Uh, I guess he wants him to high-five him and give him a snack after sacking him or something. Second and five, Pierce keeps the ball and makes a big run for the quarterback. And I think he got hit on the way down, possibly by a Faulkner player's knee. It was unintentional. It's the, sometimes the after effect of a quarterback slide, Ryan Lee was coming in on that play and I think tried to jump over quarterback Pierce's head and whole body on the slide because Lee immediately started going down and kind of grabbing his leg and knee. And it could also be uh, a little bit of the damage for Pierce could have come when he smacked his head against the turf. It looked like he hit it pretty hard. Lee was certainly, uh, you could argue he might have learned from that pass penalty. He just sort of got up and walked away. No one wanted to certainly take any action like they were celebrating what had happened. But Pierce is coming out of the game. You got to wonder, Carter, if he's about to go through a concussion protocol over there. Yeah, I'd assume he would. Anytime that 
uh, they're down holding their head in any sport. There's some sort of protocol they have to go through. I think football is probably one of the more extensive ones with concussion protocol, but they all have to clear certain uh, certain steps that they have to uh, show, and hopefully he'll be able to come back in. Raylon Garrett, who'd had some time at quarterback already, comes into the game. He keeps the ball. Again, it's one of those situations where Garrett's got two weapons, one on each side of him, and you don't really know exactly what they're going to do. That time, Garrett scampered for a 17-yard gain, first and 10 from the 22. And now, this time, it's a quick handoff to Camario Bell, who absolutely trucks a Faulkner defender trying to tackle him. And Southeastern, once again, is right back in business. You know, he tried subbing off somebody who was over on the far side of the field, and he just couldn't get off in time. He was in a full-on sprint. That's the danger of playing a, a fast offensive team, one that doesn't huddle. Garrett hands it off to Bell this time. Bell's met with a lot of traffic there right at the line of scrimmage. They've given him two yards, so that takes it to second and eight with the ball on the nine, so they can get a first down. 3.55, 54.53 left in the first half. Garrett back to pass, quick swing pass over to Jarrell Reynolds. He stops on a dime and tries to break free. He's tackled short of the first down line. That was a very interesting blocking scheme that the offensive line used there. As soon as the ball was snapped, they all dropped and hit a knee of one of the uh, Faulkner defenders and opened up the uh, space for Reynolds. It's almost like a screen pass with a running back, so he's sort of gotten a running start. But, yeah, they let the defense get in the backfield. Garrett back to pass this time. He's got a man open right in the middle, and it's LaQuavante Gonzalez who scores a touchdown. There's a flag down. Be interesting to see what this is for. Whatever it was, it was on us and it just got declined. Good defense there by Faulkner, but Gonzalez was able to get a step on his man, Raylon Garrett, with a bullet right where it needed to be. And so with 3.06 left in the first half, Southeastern has scored its third touchdown and is an extra point away from going up by 14 over the home team. Snap, hold, kick, and it's good. So the score stands at 21 to seven. Southeastern Fire over the Faulkner Eagles. We'll be right back for the kickoff. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. You wouldn't want your favorite team to play only on one side of the ball. So when it comes to insurance, why settle for someone that can handle only your auto policy? Bring your home and auto insurance to Allstate now, and you can save big on both. You deserve someone that can tackle more. That's Allstate Stand. Are you in good hands? Call Allstate agent Ben or Buddy Pugh at the Pugh Insurance Agency today at 334-334. 263-3220. That's 334-263-3220. All state insurance. The good hands people. Well, it looked like the Southeastern Drive was going to get stopped on their side of the field after a sack on a crucial third down play. But the taunting penalty gave him an automatic first down and some yards to boot. And Southeastern promptly went down and scored a touchdown. So they kick it off, and Michael Watkins picks it up for the Eagles at about the seven. And he is going to make it all the way out to the 27, it looks like, where Clayton Nicholas will take over. Neither team with a turnover today. No fumbles, no interceptions. Faulkner has missed a field goal, as has Southeastern. Nicholas has four wide receivers. 
And he's throwing right now to Jazeric Peterson down the sideline. Oh, my goodness, what a catch that was. Nah, it broke it up. He got stripped out. What I know, that's what I was getting at, <laughs> what a catch that was. It was K.J. McIlvaney. I mean, Peterson was literally going to the ground with the ball in his hands, and McIlvaney had a hand in it and was able to just swipe it out. It reminded me a lot of the uh, catch Marquez North made against South Carolina a few years ago for Tennessee, coming down on the sideline with the defender on him. But – Unlike that one, that one was broken out by the defense. Nicholas back to pass, has some time, has some room. Boy, that looks That's like gotta it be a be penalty. pass interference. Thank you. There's the call. Peterson was the intended receiver. The flag came from the other side of the field, guys. Let's see. I think because he's the one that's got to deal with Coach Bourne. <laughs> Here's the call. You heard the call. It is pass interference. They called it on K.J. McIlvaney, who apparently has a life mission of guarding Jazeric Peterson. He's broken up one play on this drive to Peterson. Caused him to miss a second pass, and that's the one where the penalty was issued. 2.46 left in the first half. Nicholas back to pass. Running around, quick pass to a receiver. That was Terrence Sims making the catch. He's going to pick up six, make it second and four now with the ball on the Faulkner 35. Yeah, this is a huge drive for Faulkner. Uh, we will be receiving the ball to start the second half, so there's a chance that we could with two touchdown here or touchdown there. Nicholas with a big pass over on the right sidelines. Jacob McCrary able to bring it in. What a big catch there for number two, Jacob McCrary, the six foot, 200 pound junior wide receiver from Goulds, Florida. And we got a penalty, we got a marker down back here. Holding on the defense. I'll tell you what I was scared that penalty was going to be. Josh Gaines got rocked. Blocking for Clayton Nicholas. Lost his helmet, but kept – he didn't exactly just, you know, get out of the play, which I think is – I know in, in NCAA is a penalty move. Yeah, I believe it's a 15-yarder. But that wasn't it. So, Faulkner, after the big pitch and catch between, between Clayton and Jacob McCrary, takes over first and ten. Looking for the end zone. Terrence Sims now has two touchdowns on the day. Clayton Nicholas, big pass to Terrence Sims. And yep. Faulkner has put another touchdown on the board, and it couldn't have come at a better time. And that was an absolute dime, too. That pass, he couldn't have handed that to Terrence any better. Absolutely perfect throw, perfect timing on the route, and a great, uh, great route uh, distribution there to give uh, Sims wide open space after he made that catch. 2.07 now left in the first half. Curran on for the extra point. Snap, hold, kick. It's up and it's good. So with that, Faulkner brings the lead down to seven. And the score is 21 to 14. We'll be right back for the kickoff to the fire. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. Over the past few years, you've heard about the Affordable Care Act, and if you've received your health insurance renewal, you know where I'm headed. It's possible for your premiums to stay about the same, but your deductible could increase dramatically. There are ways to decrease this exposure and limit your personal risk. If you have questions about the different plans offered, please call Brian Kasarjan or Brian Palk at Benefit Planners. Their number is 334-495-7476. Benefit Planners with offices in Montgomery and Greenville to serve all of your insurance needs. Well, Southeastern's going to have about two minutes before the end of the first half. Hopefully, Faulkner's defense will hold them. 
since the Eagles will get the ball to start half number two. Here's the kickoff. It's another deep one. Southeastern receives it on the five. And Marquis Northington is scampering, and he's got a great run back for the fire. Brought it back 30 yards to the 35-yard line, and that's where the fire will take over. Yeah, fire have been winning the uh, field possession battle today, but right now it's, uh, it's only a one-score game. Southeastern will try uh, to add on to it. Faulkner, if they can get one big defensive play here, maybe we can even it up before we head to half. Jonathan Pierce is still on the sidelines for the fire. Raylon Garrett back in at quarterback. Garrett, a keeper on a read option, absolutely blew through the line to the secondary before he's brought down by number 54, Austin Morrison. It's another fire first down. They're moving the chains. There's an injured Faulkner player down, and I think that might. That's number that, 54. Yeah, that is Morrison. Might have rolled something on the tackle. I'm not sure. It's going to be first and 10 for the fire on the Faulkner 49. Got the trainers out looking. We're going to keep it right here. Appreciate everybody joining us for this afternoon's broadcast of this Mid-South Conference Sun Division matchup between Faulkner University and our friends from Southeastern just a couple, three years ago when Faulkner played Southeastern in its first ever game. We were proud to host the fire that night. A lot of fire fans made the trip up from Lakeland and an awful lot of them tuned in to the broadcast that evening. It was a night game, if I recall. We don't have many of those. Yeah, it was. That was the first broadcast I ever did with FSN. I was working on the uh, camera for that. How about that? Garrett in at quarterback, back to pass. He lobs one way downfield. Gonzalez was the intended receiver, and frankly, Gonzalez had his man beat. That ball wasn't caught only because it was overthrown. Yeah, just about five yards overthrown. He had uh, Deion Hicks burnt, but that's burned. luckily. That's burned with a T, Morgan. <laughs> yeah, we got it right down here. <laughs> I'm getting burnt down here. <laughs> Garrett in the shotgun snap rolled to him. But they make something out of it with a quick handoff to Bell. And Bell is taken out of bounds by Hassan Bailey. Yeah, Nate Black came in and tried to make a shoulder tackle and uh, light him up a little bit. Keith and Bryant limping off the field. And if they don't, they finally got him off. 138 left in the first half. Garrett keeps it this time. Almost gets stripped of the ball in the backfield. Good penetration there by the Eagles. Number 21, Ryan Lee. I think he's wishing for a holding call. 133 now left. It's second and 10. Ball on the Faulkner 35. Terrell Reynolds in the backfield with quarterback Raylon Garrett. And it's a handoff to Reynolds around left side. He's got an awful lot of room to run. And if he'd have taken one more ballerina class when he was younger, he could have stayed in bounds. He was tiptoeing right on the white stripe. He was able to pick up a first down. So that's going to be first and 10. Yeah, Hunter Reed nearly got him in the backfield, but was able to get uh, just kick it into another gear and get around Reed and pick up a first. Referees are calling a timeout. I think they've got an issue with the chain. Not exactly sure what's going on. Always appreciate our, our chain crew. That is not a career you take for the money. 
but you can't have a good football game without them. So appreciate all those guys working the sidelines. 128 left in the first half of play. Garrett, he hands it off this time to Reynolds. Reynolds around right side. He's got a blocker. Faulkner finally able to bring him down just shy of his first down marker. That was great blocking. Had a blitzer coming from the left side. Fire sets up quickly again. Garrett in the shotgun. Reynolds to his side. It's a handoff to Reynolds. And Reynolds is going to walk into the end zone. There's the call. So Southeastern now with four touchdowns on the day. That was another rushing touchdown. It's tough to defend against fast runners like that, especially when you don't necessarily know when he's got the ball or if he's going to keep the ball. Southeastern has a lot of weapons that they can put behind the line of scrimmage, and they're utilizing them well here in the first half. That was a very quick drive. I don't have the numbers on it. But Southeastern only had the ball less than two minutes, I would say. Hey, there's a missed extra point. It's going to be rough in the kicker, guys. How about that? Southeastern didn't even know there was a flag. Yeah, Dion Hicks came in and just leveled the kicker, and that will give him another chance. Well, that's the kind of opening you need to beat a ranked team like this. Looks like uh, they may get a chance to close that opening. Scores 27 to 14. Southeastern's got four touchdowns. Faulkner's got two. Southeastern about to make it a 14 point game. They get their way low snap that time, but the kick is up and good. So with 105 left, Faulkner's gonna get the ball kicked to him once again. Let's see if Clayton Nicholas and those Eagles can put something together before the end of the first half. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. At Candlewood Suites, they make sure you enjoy the home away from home atmosphere. Located in East Chase Park in Montgomery, guests are right in the middle of the best shopping and restaurant district in Montgomery. But if you'd like to relax and eat in, all of Candlewood Suites have fully equipped kitchens. There's even an outdoor gazebo with grills that guests are welcome to use. Candlewood Suites offers free high-speed internet and laundry facilities. Each suite also has a DVD player with free movies available at the front desk. Make your reservations today by calling 334-277-0677 and ask for the Faulkner rate and earn IHG reward points along the way. Candlewood Suites, proud to support the Faulkner Athletic Department. Kickoff to Michael Watkins. Watkins picks it up at about the seven-yard line, and he's going to get brought down thanks to forward progress at the 24. Looks like number 37, Phillip Smith, a little slow to get up for Southeastern. Morgan, are you going to try and catch Coach Bourne as the Eagles go into the locker room? Yes, I will. Good. Certainly wouldn't mind hearing more about the injured player. He might not be in the most talkative mood. So, if he's not, we certainly respect that. We want to get him back in there as quickly as he wants to go. Joe Jones into the game now. Clayton in the backfield all by himself. Guy coming right to him. Oh, that's a catch to Reagan Amos right over the middle. The sound I made wasn't because Reagan caught it. The sound I made was that Reagan had nothing but a big patch of green grass in front of him. Ball was a little thrown a little high, so Reagan had to jump up and catch it. But another first down for the Eagles nonetheless. Good pitch and catch to the sideline there. Clayton absolutely got hammered looking for a flag. Didn't get it. Jazarek Peterson. Picks up another first down for the Eagles. And Coach Bourne is letting that referee have it. Happened right in front of the white cap. No flag thrown. I think the the kind of unwritten rules you're given maybe a step and a half or so. Uh, if you can get the quarterback within that time after he's released the ball. But especially after some of the uh, previous calls concerning attitudes and uh, actions towards quarterbacks, not calling it on there. I can see why it gets Coach Bourne mad. Clayton back to pass. Everybody's well covered. Good pass there to number 27, Joe Jones. Clayton almost went over the line of scrimmage, 
but was able to make the completion. Clayton holding his non-throwing shoulder got hit pretty hard. It's another first down, so the clock stops temporarily. Jones was in the middle of the field. 36, 35, 34 seconds left, and Coach Charlie Bourne realizes that clock's moving and calls a timeout, and I don't blame him. We'll take one as well. First half of play winding down. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. Southern homes are particularly vulnerable to termites. In this climate, you need guaranteed protection. You need Cook's Pest Control and Centricon. Termites attack the Centricon stations, exposing themselves to an agent that eliminates their entire colony. Upgrade from old-fashioned liquid service to the proven protection of Centricon and Cook's Pest Control. Call Cook's today for a free evaluation. Looky, looky, looky. Coach Charlie Boren spent as much time talking to the white cap referee as he did any Eagle player in that little timeout. And you can't really blame him with the hits that Clayton has taken on this drive. 33.9 seconds left. Nicholas back to pass, going over the top. Terrence Sims is down there, but great defense by the fire. That almost got intercepted. It almost got caught for a touchdown, and then eventually it just landed on the ground. Yeah, Kate. I think that was Jazarek Peterson who nearly made the catch on that one. K.J. McIlvaney breaking up that pass, as he's done several today. 28 seconds left. Morgan, I'd be interested to hear if Coach Bourne thinks some roughing the quarterback flags that should have been thrown have not been thrown here in the first half. Nicholas in the shotgun, back to pass. He's being chased out of the pocket. He's throwing right to the sideline. Peterson, instead of running out of bounds, takes two steps back toward the inside of the field, and that's a decision that might cost the Eagles, if nothing else, a down. There's a Southeastern player uh, down right now. Peterson should have taken the step out of bounds. I think he knows that now. You can see him, Morgan, holding his head. you got to think that's what it's for. Yeah, we've seen that out of a few games this year where we've been in the two-minute drill and wide receivers have not have not gotten out of bounds when they've needed to. Um, you know, it, it's sad that this guy's hurt for Southeastern, but it does stop the clock momentarily. Yeah, Boren and, and the guys, the second Peterson sort of juke back toward the inside of the field. They started making sure everybody was going to be ready to spike the ball. So it's 20.2 seconds left in the first half. You just heard the referee there. The clock will start on the snap. It's first and 10 on the Southeastern 21. Joe Jones in the backfield now with quarterback Clayton Nicholas. Clayton's got four receivers including Reagan Amos here on the near side. Clock starts on the snap. Nicholas in the shotgun. Snap back to him. Nicholas back, trying to move, almost fell, and now he did fall. Only chance they can do anything is to get everybody back to the line and spike the ball. The clock has eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and there's the spike. So with 2.8 seconds left, I don't think they're in any illusion of kicking a field goal here, Carter. Yeah, this will be a uh, Hail Mary jump ball. I think we'll uh, probably try and look for uh, Peterson, uh, maybe even McCrary. We've already played our double flea flicker card, <laughs> so I don't think we'll do that again. Does Eric Peterson on the near sideline, Reagan Amos and Jacob McCreary on the far sideline, Terrence Sims on the far sideline in the slot. Nicholas in the backfield, Joe Jones to his left. There's the snap. Jones with a good block. Nicholas throws it low. And that's going to do it for the first half of play. With the score 28-14, to Faulkner due to receive it. 
starting half number two. Morgan Dreer is going to try and get a word in with Coach Charlie Boren here in just a second. I think Coach Boren still doing a little coaching. Morgan, we'll give it to you. Uh, hey, Coach. Uh, you know, very disappointing for your defense, letting up 28 points. What were some adjustments you need to make in the second the half? The only adjustment we need to make is, is, is get in there and tackle somebody. If we tackle somebody, we'll be fine. There's nothing wrong with the scheme. Just we're not tackling. Uh, some of the calls were not going Faulkner's way. Uh, do you have anything to say about that? Nah, I mean, nothing I can say about it. It's obviously not a very good job officiating, but, I mean, hey, what the good does it say? It doesn't do us any good to complain about it. It's just the way it is right now. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Morgan. That's a uh, a tense Charlie Boren, and, and I can't say I blame him. We'll get another half of football to fight it out. Faulkner's going to receive the kick as we start the second half in about 20 minutes. We appreciate you joining us here on the Faulkner Sports Network. And we're going to take a quick multi-minute timeout. I don't know, but hopefully we'll be able to visit with Trip Reynolds here before the second half gets started. And I'll come back and we'll talk about some of the national games that are being played right now. I, I'm, I'm confused, Carter, because the referees are still on the field. Now they've allowed the halftime clock to start. So, that's just as good a time as any for us to take our halftime break. Make sure you join us for the second half of football for this afternoon's Sun Division Mid-South Conference matchup between the Fire from Southeastern and the Eagles of Faulkner. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. It's a Southern tradition as old as the land itself. When people gather, we bring food. Good food. Lots and lots of good food. Well, tradition just got easier. Now at Jack's, we do catering. Hand-breaded fried chicken and tenders, made from scratch biscuits, southern sides, and sweet tea. From a dozen biscuits for the morning meeting to a big game tailgate for your crew, Jack's Catering makes it easy. Order and schedule pickup online at eatatjacks.com. Delicious hand-breaded chicken, sides, biscuits, and sweet tea. They're gonna love you when you walk through that door. Right now, you can also visit winatjax.com to enter for a chance to win a VIP package to the SEC Football Championship game. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper, official sponsor of the SEC. Jax, all about the South. No purchase necessary, must be 19 and older. For entry and rules, go to winatjax.com. Subject to full official rules, void were prohibited. Southern homes are particularly vulnerable to termites. In this climate, you need guaranteed protection. You need Cook's Pest Control and Centricon. Termites attack the Centricon stations, exposing themselves to an agent that eliminates their entire colony. Upgrade from old-fashioned liquid service to the proven protection of Centricon and Cook's Pest Control. Call Cook's today for a free evaluation. Looky, 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 here comes Cookie, Cook's Pest Control. Do you have an electrical ghost in your facility that's driving you crazy? You know, those little annoyances like a breaker tripping for no reason, unexplained power surges, or the lights dimming intermittently, which could indicate dangerous and costly problems unseen by the naked eye. Well, relief is here. The technicians at Crosby Electric utilize the most advanced diagnostic tools available, including an infrared camera, an ultrasonic probe, and advanced metering equipment to diagnose your electrical problem correctly and provide the least expensive repair. Should your electrical system fail after we have serviced it, we correct the problem immediately and 100% free of charge to you. Your ghostless facility will be safer, more productive, and more profitable after Crosby Electric has put your electrical ghost to rest for good. So why wait any longer? Call Crosby Electric today, 272-2085, and learn more at CrosbyElectric.com. Crosby Electric, the power of positive thinking. The Faulkner Athletic Department is proud of its partnership with the Fairfield Inn, located on East Chase Parkway. The Marriott property employs very friendly people, has beautiful rooms, and offers a full breakfast. When making a reservation, just ask for the Faulkner rate, which is an affordable $99 a night. The number to call to make reservations is 334-260-8650. Fairfield Inn and Faulkner Athletics, a winning combination. Go Eagles! 
The deals at Domino's are hot. Like the everyday pick-me-up price of just $7.99 for a three-topping large pizza. Or that late-night special, which includes one medium, one-topping pizza, eight wings, and a two-liter Coca-Cola product for $14.99. Domino's now has salads. Choose from the chicken Caesar, chicken apple pecan, or the classic garden, priced at just $6.49 a piece. Join the Piece of the Pie Rewards Program, where you can earn points toward free pizza. Sign up now at Domino's dot com slash rewards dominoes with four locations in montgomery including one right across from the faulkner campus and one in prattville for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or even for just a quick snack any time of the day, a popular Faulkner spot is the Chick-fil-A located in East Del Mall. It's open from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., and it's located just down the road from the Faulkner campus. And the Chick-fil-A at East Del Mall is always looking for energetic Faulkner students to work at their location. Have a great get-together at the office, but not enough time to pick up the food? No problem with Chick-fil-A at East Del Mall. They're more than happy to bring it to you. Give Jason a call at 334-272-1411 today. He'll be happy to serve you. Do you know why Guardian is Alabama's fastest growing credit union? One of the reasons is our unbeatable loan rates. How low do we go? Well, now there's an easy way to find out. Announcing loans by phone. You can actually complete your loan application in full over the phone, anytime, day or night, from wherever you are. Yep, 24-7. And you don't have to be a member. So give us a call at 244-9999, and we'll take it from there. Guardian Credit Union, where you belong. Federally insured by NCUA. From office lunch catering to home parties, Jason's Deli has you covered. And everybody knows that the best salad bar in town is located at Jason's Deli. More items to choose from, allowing a Jason's Deli salad to truly be a meal. Located on the bypass just down from Best Buy, Jason's Deli has a menu that highlights their passion for fresh and delicious foods. And Jason's Deli is always happy to deliver. Give them a call today at 334-409-9890. That's 334-409-9890, Jason's Deli. When you want it, just come and get it. Hot and ready pizza, Little Caesars. Walk in, walk out with a large $5 hot and ready pepperoni pizza from Little Caesars. When you want it, just come and get it. Hot and ready pizza, Little Caesars. Come on and get it now. Pizza, pizza. The coast is here. Wharf Casual Seafood is a family-friendly restaurant serving high-quality, fresh seafood at a great value. Let us cater to your needs. We offer both formal and casual catering options, perfect for events like weddings, anniversaries, or even office parties. We're conveniently located near the Faulkner campus at the corner of Atlanta Highway and Perry Hill Road. Visit us online at wharfcasualseafood.com or give us a call at 334-676-3200. You wouldn't want your favorite team to play only on one side of the ball. So when it comes to insurance, why settle for someone that can handle only your auto policy? Bring your home and auto insurance to Allstate now, and you can save big on both. You deserve someone that can tackle more. That's Allstate Stand. Are you in good hands? Call Allstate agent Ben or Buddy Pugh at the Pugh Insurance Agency today at 334 334- 263-3220. That's 334-263-3220. All state insurance. The good hands people. Over the past few years, you've heard about the Affordable Care Act, and if you've received your health insurance renewal, you know where I'm headed. It's possible for your premiums to stay about the same, but your deductible could increase dramatically. There are ways to decrease this exposure and limit your personal risk. If you have questions about the different plans offered, please call Brian Kasarjan or Brian Palk at Benefit Planners. Their number is 334-495-7476. Benefit Planners with offices in Montgomery and Greenville to serve all of your insurance needs. At Candlewood Suites, they make sure you enjoy the home away from home atmosphere. 
Located in East Chase Park in Montgomery, guests are right in the middle of the best shopping and restaurant district in Montgomery. But if you'd like to relax and eat in, all of Candlewood Suites have fully equipped kitchens. There's even an outdoor gazebo with grills that guests are welcome to use. Candlewood Suites offers free high-speed internet and laundry facilities. Each suite also has a DVD player with free movies available at the front desk. Make your reservations today by calling 334-277-0677 and ask for the Faulkner rate and earn IHG reward points along the way. Candlewood Suites, proud to support the Faulkner Athletic Department. Don Duncan's All-American Automotive and Tire has been a staple in Montgomery for some time now and has been a big supporter of Faulkner University for years. With two locations to choose from, one downtown at 408 Madison Avenue and the other at 2700 Bell Road, you're never far from getting the absolute best in complete auto repair at the most affordable prices. Apply for a Goodyear credit card and get six months same as cash and allow the ASE certified master technicians to take care of all of your automotive needs. Whether it's engine and electrical diagnostics, brakes, the transmission, or just a tune-up or an oil change. Turn to Don Duncan's All-American Automotive and Tire. They're direct dealers for Goodyear, Kelly, Dunlop, and Cooper Tires, and they offer special discounts on tire brands such as Michelin, BFG, Nitto, Toyo, and Continental. And if you mention you're a part of the Faulkner family, you'll earn an additional 10% discount. Get by and see Faulkner graduate Nathan Woodring, the manager at the Madison Avenue location, or the great staff at the Bell Road location soon. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. It's Don Duncan's All-American Automotive and Tire. It's a southern tradition as old as the land itself. When people gather, we bring food. Good food. Lots and lots of good food. Well, tradition just got easier. Now at Jack's, we do catering. Hand-breaded fried chicken and tenders, made from scratch biscuits, southern sides, and sweet tea. From a dozen biscuits for the morning meeting to a big game tailgate for your crew, Jack's Catering makes it easy. Order and schedule pickup online at eatatjacks.com. Delicious hand-breaded chicken, sides, biscuits, and sweet tea. They're going to love you when you walk through that door. Right now, you can also visit winatjacks.com to enter for a chance to win a VIP package to the SEC football championship game. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper, official sponsor of the SEC. Jacks, all about the South. No purchase necessary, must be 19 and older. For entry and rules, go to winatjax.com. Subject to full official rules, void were prohibited. Southern homes are particularly vulnerable to termites. In this climate, you need guaranteed protection. You need Cook's Pest Control and Centricon. Termites attack the Centricon stations, exposing themselves to an agent that eliminates their entire colony. Upgrade from old-fashioned liquid service to the proven protection of Centricon and Cook's Pest Control. Call Cook's today for a free evaluation. Looky, 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 here comes Cookie, Cook's Pest Control. Do you have an electrical ghost in your facility that's driving you crazy? You know, those little annoyances like a breaker tripping for no reason, unexplained power surges, or the lights dimming intermittently, which could indicate dangerous and costly problems unseen by the naked eye. Well, relief is here. The technicians at Crosby Electric utilize the most advanced diagnostic tools available, including an infrared camera, an ultrasonic probe, and advanced metering equipment to diagnose your electrical problem correctly and provide the least expensive repair. Should your electrical system fail after we have serviced it, we correct the problem immediately and 100% free of charge to you. Your ghostless facility will be safer, more productive, and more profitable after Crosby Electric has put your electrical ghost to rest for good. So why wait any longer? Call Crosby Electric today, 272-2085, and learn more at CrosbyElectric.com. Crosby Electric, the power of positive thinking. The Faulkner Athletic Department is proud of its partnership with the Fairfield Inn, located on East Chase Parkway. The Marriott property employs very friendly people, has beautiful rooms, and offers a full breakfast. When making a reservation, just ask for the Faulkner rate, which is an affordable $99 a night. The number to call to make reservations is 334-260-8650. Fairfield Inn and Faulkner Athletics, a winning combination. Go Eagles! 
The deals at Domino's are hot. Like the everyday pick-me-up price of just $7.99 for a three-topping large pizza. Or that late-night special, which includes one medium, one-topping pizza, eight wings, and a two-liter Coca-Cola product for $14.99. Domino's now has salads. Choose from the chicken Caesar, chicken apple pecan, or the classic garden, priced at just $6.49 a piece. Join the Piece of the Pie Rewards Program, where you can earn points toward free pizza. Sign up now at Domino's dot com slash rewards dominoes with four locations in montgomery including one right across from the faulkner campus and one in prattville for breakfast lunch or dinner or even for just a quick snack any time of the day a popular faulkner spot is the chick-fil-a located in east del mall it's open from 10 a.m to 9 p.m and it's located just down the road from the faulkner campus and the chick-fil-a at east del mall is always looking for energetic faulkner students to work at their location have a great get together at the office but not enough time to pick up the food no problem with chick-fil-a at east del mall they're more than happy to bring it to you Give Jason a call at 334-272-1411 today. He'll be happy to serve you. Do you know why Guardian is Alabama's fastest growing credit union? One of the reasons is our unbeatable loan rates. How low do we go? Well, now there's an easy way to find out. Announcing loans by phone. You can actually complete your loan application in full over the phone, anytime, day or night, from wherever you are. Yep, 24-7. And you don't have to be a member. So give us a call at 244-9999, and we'll take it from there. Guardian Credit Union, where you belong. Federally insured by NCUA. From office lunch catering to home parties, Jason's Deli has you covered. And everybody knows that the best salad bar in town is located at Jason's Deli. More items to choose from, allowing a Jason's Deli salad to truly be a meal. Located on the bypass just down from Best Buy, Jason's Deli has a menu that highlights their passion for fresh and delicious foods. And Jason's Deli is always happy to deliver. Give them a call today at 334-409-9890. That's 334-409-9890, Jason's Deli. When you want it, just come and get it. Hot and ready pizza, Little Caesars. Walk in, walk out with a large $5 hot and ready pepperoni pizza from Little Caesars. When you want it, just come and get it. Hot and ready pizza, Little Caesars. Come on and get it now. Pizza, pizza. The coast is here. Wharf Casual Seafood is a family-friendly restaurant serving high-quality, fresh seafood at a great value. Let us cater to your needs. We offer both formal and casual catering options, perfect for events like weddings, anniversaries, or even office parties. We're conveniently located near the Faulkner campus at the corner of Atlanta Highway and Perry Hill Road. Visit us online at wharfcasualseafood.com or give us a call at 334-676-3200. You wouldn't want your favorite team to play only on one side of the ball. So when it comes to insurance, why settle for someone that can handle only your auto policy? Bring your home and auto insurance to Allstate now, and you can save big on both. You deserve someone that can tackle more. That's Allstate Stand. Are you in good hands? Call Allstate agent Ben or Buddy Pugh at the Pugh Insurance Agency today at 334 334- 263-3220. That's 334-263-3220. All state insurance. The good hands people. Over the past few years, you've heard about the Affordable Care Act, and if you've received your health insurance renewal, you know where I'm headed. It's possible for your premiums to stay about the same, but your deductible could increase dramatically. There are ways to decrease this exposure and limit your personal risk. If you have questions about the different plans offered, please call Brian Kasarjan or Brian Palk at Benefit Planners. Their number is 334-495-7476. Benefit Planners with offices in Montgomery and Greenville to serve all of your insurance needs. At Candlewood Suites, they make sure you enjoy the home away from home atmosphere. 
located in East Chase Park in Montgomery. Guests are right in the middle of the best shopping and restaurant district in Montgomery. But if you'd like to relax and eat in, all of Candlewood Suites have fully equipped kitchens. There's even an outdoor gazebo with grills that guests are welcome to use. Candlewood Suites offers free high-speed internet and laundry facilities. Each suite also has a DVD player with free movies available at the front desk. Make your reservations today by calling 334-277-0677 and ask for the Faulkner rate and earn IHG reward points along the way. Candlewood Suites, proud to support the Faulkner Athletic Department. Don Duncan's All-American Automotive and Tire has been a staple in Montgomery for some time now and has been a big supporter of Faulkner University for years. With two locations to choose from, one downtown at 408 Madison Avenue and the other at 2700 Bell Road, you're never far from getting the absolute best in complete auto repair at the most affordable prices. Apply for a Goodyear credit card and get six months same as cash and allow the ASE certified master technicians to take care of all of your automotive needs. Whether it's engine and electrical diagnostics, brakes, the transmission, or just a tune-up or an oil change, turn to Don Duncan's All-American Automotive and Tire. They're direct dealers for Goodyear, Kelly, Dunlop, and Cooper Tires, and they offer special discounts on tire brands such as Michelin, BFG, Nitto, Toyo, and Continental. And if you mention you're a part of the Faulkner family, you'll earn an additional 10% discount. Get by and see Faulkner graduate Nathan Woodring, the manager at the Madison Avenue location, or the great staff at the Bell Road location soon. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. It's Don Duncan's All-American Automotive and Tire. It's a Southern tradition as old as the land itself. When people gather, we bring food. Good food. Lots and lots of good food. Well, tradition just got easier. Now at Jack's, we do catering. Hand-breaded fried chicken and tenders, made from scratch biscuits, Southern sides, and sweet tea. From a dozen biscuits for the morning meeting to a big game tailgate for your crew, Jack's Catering makes it easy. Order and schedule pickup online at eatatjacks.com. Delicious hand-breaded chicken, sides, biscuits, and sweet tea. They're going to love you when you walk through that door. Right now, you can also visit winatjacks.com to enter for a chance to win a VIP package to the SEC football championship game. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper, official sponsor of the SEC. Jacks all about the South. No purchase necessary, must be 19 and older. For entry and rules, go to winatjax.com. Subject to full official rules, void were prohibited. About ready to put total leather here for the start of the second half. Faulkner will receive to start. Just a quick look at some halftime stats. Uh, about even on total yards. Southeastern to 319. Faulkner with 293. Looks like Michael Watkins back to receive this kick from Kay from David Larson. Larson tees it away. Watkins receives at the four. Up to the 10, 15, 20. Cuts outside. Bouncing around trying to find something. Loses it, fumble. Oh, no. And Southeastern has recovered. I think they're going to call him down. I I sure hope so. That would be a disastrous start for the Eagles. Southeastern doesn't look nearly as excited as a team that just picked the ball up on inside the 10-yard line would be. Well, I tell you, I don't know why they're calling him down, but I'm glad they are. Yeah, absolutely. I think hope they might be calling Ford Progress. Hope everyone enjoyed a good halftime. We just decided to give everybody's ears a break. Certainly appreciate all our friends at the Faulkner Sports Network down there making sure the video is up and running and all of you for watching. Nicholas back to pass right over the middle. Good catch there by Terrence Sims. You couldn't have snapped your fingers between the time Sims touched the ball and the time the fire defender touched Sims. I mean, it was bang, bang if there ever was one. Yeah, Clayton has tried a lot of threading the needle today, and uh, he did that there. He did it earlier on uh, Sims' second touchdown reception of the half. 
Bryant will pick up about two yards on that one. 28-14 is the score. Thanks to a touchdown the fire got with just over a minute left in the first half. Bryant still in the backfield with Clayton. Three receiver set. Reagan Amos in the slot. Snap back to Clayton. Quick pass. I think Reagan was the intended receiver. It was a crossing route about six yards, maybe about three or four yards deep. Terrence Sims was the other crosser. There is a fire player down on the f near the far sideline. Looks like that's number 36, Avion Brown. Didn't quite see what happened. Morgan, were you able, were you able to see at all what happened? Or? I saw two Southeastern players collide. Um, one stayed down and the other one jumped right back up. So uh, hopefully he's okay. Yeah, I think he just tried coming back onto the field. I, I thought so too, but I think somebody was asking him a question and he turned around and answered the question. He got off on his own power, but I thought the same thing, Carter. Four receivers for quarterback Clayton Nicholas. Back to pass. And he throws an interception. Not sure if he was in bounds or not. If so, that's the first turnover of the day. And it is. Clayton got absolutely rocked on that pass, and I think he was hoping there would be a penalty flag thrown in the backfield. That's the first turnover for either team. Quite the contrast from the uh, last game you and I called together against Weber where we had, what, four turnovers yeah. in the first 15 minutes that's of it? That's right. You know, frankly, that's probably about where things would have ended up had we had to punt the ball. So maybe we'll look at it that way. Pierce into the game for the fire. Pierce tucks and runs around right side. He gets some positive yardage. First time we've seen Pierce this half, and, and frankly, in a little while, certainly in real time, Pierce went out, we think, maybe with a possible concussion, but he is back and ready to go. Handing off the ball on that play to Jarrell Reynolds. Yeah, Malik Meadows has been involved in the last two tackles. I don't think we called that name at all in the first half. It's third and five. Camario Bell in the backfield now with Pierce. Fire getting to the line quickly. Faulkner showing blitz. And Pierce looks over to the fire sidelines. Ball's on Southeastern 46. Laquavante Gonzalez has one-on-one -on -one coverage along the, along the near sideline. Pierce goes over the middle. Great, great defense there by Nate Black. But he got hit hard. The intended receiver was Matthew Craig, a six-foot-five tight end out of Greenville. Nate Black limping off. Looks like he's favoring his right ankle. Can't stress enough, that would have been a first down and then some. But Nate Black with the good defense. Looks like Southeastern's going to have to punt. It's fourth and five. And here comes the flag. False start, I believe. Now there's flags in the backfield may be the same. Might be a 12-man flag yeah, back here and a false is. start back here. Well, that referee just – referee in the back just picked his flag up. There was a late guy that came running on, might have thought that there were 12 on. Double counted and that's must have right. said, hey, pay no attention. I think flag. he made 11. 
Oh, kicker got hit, and they threw the flag. Terrence Sims picks the ball up running at the 20. Should have been a late. This late kicker has there. done an incredible job of selling these calls. He uh, He's taken some acting lessons. I mean, we did run into him, but he definitely helped sell the call. Called on Vashon Jackson, if I heard the number correctly. Automatic first down. That's twice questionable penalties have extended fire drives from that portion of the field. The last time it was a sack on third down and a Faulkner player, I believe it was, was it Ryan Lee? Ryan Lee got called for the first one and <clears throat> got called for taunting. And then now Jackson gets called for roughing the punter. Jonathan Pierce still in at quarterback for the fire. Quick handoff there to Camario Bell, who's got a blocker around left side and absolutely blows through that defensive front all the way into the secondary. He dangerously shifted hands where the ball was being carried while he was under contact. First and 10 from the 30, and Bell is tied up at the line of scrimmage. Frankly, one of the better stops of Bell we've had all day. It might honestly be the first run of no gain or or a, or a loss of gain this entire game for Faulkner. That was either the 15th or 16th time they've handed it off to what Bell. What a sack. Absolute that ball's out. That's sack. ours. And that's a fumble. Ryan Lee, huge sack coming around on the blind side of quarterback Jonathan Pierce. Second he hits him, the ball comes out. I didn't catch the number of the fumble recoverer, but I think it was Keith Bryant. I think it was too. 96, Keith Bryant, heads up play, just picking it up. And so a drive that started for the fire because of an interception of a Clayton Nicholas pass has ended because of a Jonathan Pierce fumble. And so Faulkner now has the ball back, first and 10 on their 38 with 11.47 left in the third. In a game with no turnovers in the first half, we have two on the first two, first two drives. Clayton with a quick wheel route pass to Reagan Amos right on the sidelines. Reagan got drilled, lost his helmet, and they're saying he was no out of bounds. No way. There is absolutely no way that they can call that. Th this is getting ridiculous, honestly. He took three steps in bounds and got pile driven out with the ball in his stomach. I, I, I honestly do not know what they're seeing. And we got a penalty back behind the play, oh too. Oh, my goodness. And Reagan lost his helmet, so he's out for this play. Reagan was lined up in the backfield. Kawan Bryant was on Nicholas's right. Reagan was on the left. Reagan went out for a design pass play and caught the ball to me in bounds. Got drilled to the outside, lost his helmet. Not sure what the penalty was. Looks like they might have picked it up. Ball's on the 28. Saying first down. I'm not sure that's correct, though. I believe first down would be right because it's probably a hold or something like that. It was in that area. But yeah, we just I think cannot, you're right. Yeah. We can't get a 50-50 call right now if our lives depended on it. Second and 20 must have been a hold because the ball was on the 38 before. You're right. The intended receiver on that last play was Jacob McCrary. So second and 20 on the 28. Four receivers for Clayton. Clayton back to pass. He's getting rushed outside the pocket. He's throwing that for dear life. And there's a flag. Not sure if it's going to be on us or them. That'll likely be on number 20, Jemiah Albritton, for Southeastern. Probably a defensive holding, which would be a 10-yard penalty automatic first down. Southeastern's arguing it was uncatchable. It doesn't matter uh, if it's a hold. It matter on a hold. Yeah. 
Well, Carter, I think that was a 50-50 call we got, so maybe that tide has turned a little. Hopefully. The yards are good, but the first down is a great. Yes, <laughs> especially staring down the barrel of a second and 20. <clears throat> hey, guys, Nate Black still getting checked out down here on the trainer's table. All right, thanks for that update, Morgan. First and 10, ball on the 38. We're back to where we were a minute ago. Quick pass to Reagan Amos, just like we did a minute ago. Oh, my goodness. Big tackle there by Southeastern. Grabbing him by the neck, and 24, James Swain is talking a lot right now. Yeah, he's proud of that tackle. But Reagan got the first down, so I think on paper he won the battle. Juan Bryan in the backfield with Clayton. Twin receiver set. Clayton back to pass. Once again, Reagan Amos was the intended receiver. He had two. Can you say fireman? Is that right? He had two on his tail. And the pass was dropped. So that brings up second and ten with the ball on Southeastern's 48-yard line. Jacob McCrary, Terrence Sims, Reagan Amos, Jazeric Peterson. That's your receiving core. Joe Jones in the backfield with Clayton. Clayton quick pass there to Terrence Sims. Just a little slant route. Got us six yards. It's going to bring up third and four. Big third down play. We're kind of in a, I don't want to say we're in a no man's land just yet. We're not, but we need this one. Looking for a pass interference there was Terrence Sims. Good defense by number 20, Jemiah Albritton. He's the one that committed the defensive holding before. I think Sims is arguing that his hands were being held back behind him. And it looked like they were from here. A little confusion on the Faulkner sideline over what they're going to do. Clayton's back out there. Southeastern's sending out their punt team. 14, 11, 10, 9 on the play clock. Four receiver set. Joe in the backfield with Clayton. Clayton, quick pass over to Terrence Sims. That's a first. And we've got a first down. What a good catch there by number 80. He scored both of the touchdowns today. And certainly kept the drive alive on that one. Sims is having him a very, very good day so far. He's been the most uh, sure hands on the team. Only receiver on the field with more than 100 yards catching. His longest, the 47-yard double flea flicker. Clayton back to pass. Oh, my goodness. The ball was tipped up off a pass intended for Terrence Sims. Jazeric Peterson was in the right place at the right time, and that's one I wish we could put up on the replay board. Peterson officially with the catch. It couldn't have been thrown from Sims to Peterson any cleaner if it was a hook and ladder play. First and 10 now, ball on the 21. Twin receivers on each side. Joe Jones in the backfield with the quarterback. Nicholas back to pass, going deep. It's overthrown, overthrows everybody. Just Eric Peterson was the closest receiver. K.J. McElvaney, who's given Peterson some trouble today, was the defender. Michael, uh, Peterson, rather, comes out of the game. Chase Wilson, one of our tight ends, is into the game now. 9.43 left in the third quarter. Play clock's got 10, and we just got the play called, called in. Five on the play clock. Clayton in the shotgun. Quick pass over the top. Goes to nobody. There is a flag. It's not on roughing the passer, even though Clayton got hit pretty good. It might be a pass interference call again. Yeah, I think it will be.
Whitecaps looking for the right folks and the right number. That's another call on Jemiah Albritton. It's a fine line between close defense and penalty defense, you know. Yeah, there is. And I, I think uh, this uh, that call there was because once the ball was thrown, they jammed again. And once you break contact outside of five, you can't jam. So it's first and goal from the six. Nicholas in the backfield. Joe Jones gets the handoff. He goes right around right side and scores. Big touchdown there for number 27, Joe Jones, the senior out of Buford, Georgia. Great run for Joe. Uh, great blocking by the offensive line to spring him free. And it's a one-score game now. Any Anything can happen. There's... 9.30 left in, well, 9.32 left in the third quarter. There's a lot of football to be played, and both teams, th this, they both teams see this as a ring-winning game. If you win the division, uh, well, it'll be determined today, unless you just um, lose a game you shouldn't. Curran back for the extra point. These are always crucial. It's good. There is a flag. Not sure who it's on. If it's on them, obviously we'll decline it. I believe it is. Well, you heard it there. Hands to the face is the call. I think he said a 15-yard penalty that will get enforced on the kickoff. So, yep. We'll see what Faulkner special teams can do with that right when we return. The score, 28-21, to 21, thanks to that Faulkner touchdown. Come back for the kickoff to the fire. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. The Faulkner Athletic Department is proud of its partnership with the Fairfield Inn, located on East Chase Parkway. The Marriott property employs very friendly people, has beautiful rooms, and offers a full breakfast. When making a reservation, just ask for the Faulkner rate, which is an affordable $99 a night. The number to call to make reservations is 334-260-8650. Fairfield Inn and Faulkner Athletics, a winning combination. Go Eagles! Here comes the kick, the ball squarely on the Eagles face thanks to the 15-yard penalty. And it's boomed out of the back of the end zone as you would expect. Nice job there by Blake Levin. I'd like to give a uh, special shout out to my uh, grandfather, George Henson. It's his 85th birthday today. Happy birthday, Papa. Thank you and Gigi for uh, listening and always supporting me. 85, boy, that's a that's a, that's a big time birthday. Absolutely, make sure Gigi feeds you well tonight, Papa. False start. It's going to be the call on Southeastern as they take over on the 25. Jonathan Pierce is still in the game for the fire. Just called a false start on the whole team. <laughs> Just the whole team, huh? Yes, it's one of those things where the center misses the cadence and thinks you're going on three opposed to two or something. First and 15, man in motion, does not get the handoff. Pierce keeps it. Pierce with a big run, almost to the first down marker. It's going to bring up second and short. Going to make it second and two. Faulkner looks a little discombobulated. A lot of one-on-one -on -one with the receivers. Pierce keeps it again. Sort of a zone read option again with Jarrell Reynolds as the running back in the backfield with the quarterback. Acts like he's giving it to him and then takes off around left side. Yeah, when you've had a lot of success running the ball with the other quarterback that's come in and your running back, you don't really key in on the quarterback if he's not a running type. And it's opening up these holes that he's taking advantage of right now. Well, he may not have been a running type before, but that's two or three plays on this drive that he's done just fine with it. 
Balls now on the 50 yard line. Second down and short. The give this time to the running back, Jarrell Reynolds, who picks up the first down. Smith made the tackle on play game nine yards. 8.22 left. Looks like Hunter Reed is a little slow to get up. We've had a lot of defensive players go down today. Nate Black still over here getting looked at. Hunter Reed going down. Reed, number 45, the junior linebacker from Trustville, Alabama. Still laying down. Trainer looking at him right now. Referees are taking advantage of the stoppage. A little water break for them. Carter, looks like some of your soccer teams are showing up on the other side over there. Faulkner with a men's and women's soccer matchup tonight here on John Mark Stallings Field. Yeah, Bethel's, especially on the men's side, has been a very, very heated competition the past few years. Uh, we've played them in just the th uh, three seasons that have already completed uh, since I've been here. We've played them in the playoffs twice, uh, Bethel winning both of those. The first one, I think, was like a 3-0 or something like that. But the most recent one was two years ago when we went up to McKenzie, Tennessee and lost 4-3. to three. We took a 2 nothing lead, and then Bethel scored four unanswered. Uh, some, some calls didn't go Faulkner's way, and we just started losing our mentality. And that was also the same year that Bethel came here and we scored with 17.6 seconds left in overtime and a golden goal overtime next goal wins. How about that? And uh, last year we went on the road there in the regular season and lost one nothing. So it should be a very competitive, very intense game tonight. Uh, both teams uh, strong defensively with uh, some pretty good goal scorers that can make anything happen. So it'll be interesting to see how this game shakes out tonight. And the women, uh, they've got their work cut out for them as well, trying to get their first conference win of the year. First and ten, handoff by the quarterback, Pierce. Up the middle goes number 18, Terrell Williams, a sophomore from Ocala, his first touch of the day that I recall. Play fails to gain, so it's second and ten again. Three receiver set for Pierce. He's back ready to throw. And he's looking to number two, Gonzalez. LaQuavante Gonzalez makes another reception. I think he thought there should have been a penalty there, but no call. Yeah, Deion Hicks might have gotten him uh, around the shoulder, underneath the shoulder pads on the tackle. Pierce with another pass out to the southeastern sidelines. The receiver breaks away. That's Bryce Miller for a first down and almost for a touchdown. They must have seen something in film on Hassan Bailey and his ability to cover uh, these uh, curl routes because they've picked on him several, several times with these. First and goal from the five and Southeastern piles it in. It was Terrell Williams with the touchdown just right up the middle. So that's been the Southeastern game plan for several of their scores today. And the one score game goes back to being a two score game. Scores 34 to 21 with the extra point pending. The snap, the hold, the kick, it's up and it's good. Off the foot of Caleb Winter. So the score with 719 left in the third quarter, Southeastern 35, Faulkner 21. Come back for the kickoff to the Eagles. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. 
The deals at Domino's are hot. Like the everyday pick-me-up price of just $7.99 for a three-topping large pizza. Or that late-night special, which includes one medium, one-topping pizza, eight wings, and a two-liter Coca-Cola product for $14.99. Domino's now has salads. Choose from the Chicken Caesar, Chicken Apple Pecan, or the Classic Garden, priced at just $6.49 apiece. Join the Piece of the Pie Rewards Program, where you can earn points toward free pizza. Sign up now at Domino's dot com slash rewards dominoes with four locations in montgomery including one right across from the faulkner campus and one in prattville that kick off to michael watkins by southeastern was a booming kick went over watkins head it's going to be a touchback for the Eagles, so Faulkner will start first and 10 on their own 25. A Southeastern with a pretty impressive drive there. It was a big drive for Faulkner here. Southeastern with 413 total yards to Faulkner's 356. Nicholas hoping to add to that. Quick pass out to the far sidelines. Reagan Amos was the intended receiver. James Swain on the coverage. Yeah, that was good coverage by Swain. Uh, couldn't, didn't let Reagan go at all. And it was completely clean, just great, tough uh, defending. Risky throw by some measure. Amos, the 5'10 wide receiver. Swain, the 6'2 defensive back. Nicholas with a high snap, brings it down, hands it off to Joe Jones. Jones gets 10 yards, likely on the nose, enough for the first down. Good run there for Joe after the touchdown run before. Another high snap, Joe right up the middle, and another first down. Looking like Southeastern a little bit, Carter. Yeah, absolutely. Just good run in there. And have two fire players a little slow getting up. Number 36, Avion Brown limping off the field. Looks like he's favoring his left leg. Yeah, he was just hurt a few moments ago, I believe on the last defensive possession. And I don't know if it's a re-aggravation of what happened or just a new thing here, but – He's not putting any weight on it coming off. It's not not a good sign. Hopefully he'll be all right, though. Clayton's 22 of 40 on the day. Back-to-back -back running plays have gotten Faulkner from the 25 to the 48, where it's first and 10. Jones in the backfield. Twin receivers on each side. Both sides have them stacked up southeastern playing pretty close defense clayton back to throw tries to thread the needle to reagan amos a nearly impossible throw amos and peterson on this side went out and did sort of some crisscross routes reagan had a small window in which to make all that happen, and the ball goes incomplete off his hands. He nearly made the catch nonetheless. He though. sure it did. Was impressive throw. Just too much uh, defensive coverage there to hold on. Nicholas, big throw this time. Off McCreary shoulder pass. Off McCreary. McCreary was open. They needed that play, Carter. That would have been a first down. Yeah. I mean, the ball was there. It was – I think that one was designed to go low and have him kind of slide into it because he seemed to almost slide before the ball was thrown. That's two passes in a row that have gone to receivers, but it's been off their hands. Michael Watkins into the game. Joe Jones out, so Clayton's by himself in the backfield with five on the play clock. Back to pass, quick pass over to Jacob McCrary. Same play as before. This time McCrary able to make the catch and the first down. Mark Myers, the defensive back 
for the fire actually slipped on the coverage, and that made McCrary have a wide open path to catch that ball, and it extends, extends the drive most importantly. Yeah, big pickup for the Eagles, able to keep the chains moving, keep the ball, and hopefully get seven out of this. Joe Jones back in the backfield. Clayton fakes it to him and ends up throwing it to Terrence Sims. Nice cut before he is tackled by number 56 for the fire, Josh Schulte. We've called his name a couple times today. Sims is holding his hand a little bit weird and just came off. But Morgan, if you could try and keep an eye on that for us, hopefully he'll be able to keep going on. Yeah, Sims was piled, I don't know what past tense of pile drive. Is that pile <laughs> drove, pile driven into the ground? Nicholas in the shotgun. Joe Jones, man in motion. Quick pass to Joe, but Joe keeps it and throws it for the end zone, and it's caught. It's caught, but there's a flag at the line of scrimmage. You've Okay, they're not sure they're picking who it's it up. On. They're picking oh, up the good. flag. There you go. How about that? Jacob McCrary with a huge catch. Joe Jones takes the little shovel pass from Clayton Nicholas, basically just a lengthy handoff, Carter, Yeah, and just immediately lobs it up. That's a play that we've run several times at Faulkner. I've seen that play run a lot with Joe where we just let him kind of throw yeah. a fade route. And you, it hasn't worked very well, but – so far, these little trickeration plays have been working very well for the Eagles. Curran with the extra point. It's up and it's good. There's two flags on the three flags on the play. That's two extra points in a row for Faulkner that there have been flags thrown. The last one was for hands to the face. And now there's a fourth flag thrown. This is going to be unsportsmanlike. They're not picking this one up. A lot of jawing, it looks like, by one of the fire players to a referee. Let's see what the call is. That's Robert Greathouse called for the unsportsmanlike penalty, his first of the game. He was giving that referee the business after the extra point. And another referee saw the situation and threw the flag. It was not the referee who was the recipient of that conversation. It was another one. So both flags were thrown on Southeastern. One was declined, and then the other is enforced on the kickoff, which really – you know, it's 15 yards, not really the biggest deal in the world when it's enforced on the kickoff. Maybe that's a maybe that's a low-risk time to speak to your referee friends. Yeah. So Blake Levin, for the second time this game, has the opportunity to kick it off from the Eagles' head, and he almost got it through the uprights. I'm quite confident he wasn't trying to do that, but would have been pretty cool nonetheless. So it's back to a one touchdown game. Morgan, it seems like the Eagles are staying confident even though there's been a lot of back and forth on the scoreboard. Yeah, the, the confidence definitely swung their way after that touchdown pass by Joe Jones. I mean, just a tremendous play by him and, you know, Jacob McCreary, just, that's just practice, that's all that is. Uh, good job by the Faulkner Eagles and they're pumped up down here on the sideline. You know what's crazy? It was really a risky pass. I mean, it was high. It was a lob pass, but uh, and it had a very small window in which to fall. Uh, but it all worked out just fine. So Joe Jones has run one in and thrown one. Pretty good day. Pierce back in as quarterback, and he takes off to the races. Big first down, almost leaps completely over. I believe it was Willie Bland. Almost leaps completely over Bland. But Bland gets enough of his leg to stop the drive at 17 yards. Pierce back to pass this time. He is getting chased. He doesn't know it. Big tackle there Daniel by Johnson. number 30, Daniel Johnson. 
You know, I think they left his blind side open on purpose, thinking that it might get more Faulkner folks behind the line of scrimmage and nowhere near the receivers. But yep. that makes it second and 17. It looked like it might have even been a designed rollout. Yeah. It's going to be a flag. Not sure if it's on us or them. It's on us. Contact in the neutral zone. You heard the call. Number 95, William Winters. Sophomore from Utah, Alabama. Pierce in the shotgun. Eagles showing blitz again. Three receivers. Kind of a pistol formation for Pierce in the backfield. Pierce keeps it. Trying to roll out. He gets... Almost. Oh, barely escapes getting sacked. And now he's running out of bounds. I think he's going to pick up a first down. But Antonio Gurley was inches away from a big sack there for the Eagles. Yeah, nearly got a nice shoestring sack. But just got around him and ended up picking up a long first down. Same formation for Pierce. He goes back to pass this time. He's got a man open. No flags on the play. It's an incomplete pass with Bryce Miller as the intended receiver. Miller has caught that ball once or twice today. So that's going to bring up second and 10. The ball on the Faulkner 48. Pierce in the backfield with Jarrell Reynolds to his right. And Reynolds gets the quick handoff. Reynolds stopped at the line of scrimmage. He might have gotten one out of it. But he got wrapped up pretty good there by number 96, Eric Reeves. Keith Bryant, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Reynolds might have kicked at Keith Bryant a little bit while he was down. And Bryant is not happy about it at all. Bryant almost didn't get off the field in time. A lot of folks in the center there. Nobody's ready to tackle the quarterback, and he just evaded everybody. There's a flag back here, likely going to be a hold. and might even be another penalty on number 21. Jarrell Reynolds, <coughs> referee threw his flag, or the umpire threw his flag, and then also... A fumble marker. That's an interesting pickup. I thought they had two flags he could have thrown. Maybe not. Let's listen in. Oh, my goodness. Ryan Lee just got ejected from the game for his second unsportsmanlike foul call of the afternoon. The first one extended a southeastern drive on a play that would otherwise have been a sack. Look, Levante Gonzalez thought it would be cute to try and give Ryan Lee a big high five coming off the field. That didn't work. Doing stuff like that, if you're uh, if you're Gonzalez, that's the stuff that's going to get you hit really hard next time. Yeah, Gonzalez, I think, is talking a lot to the sidelines at Faulkner. And now he's even mouthing off with Coach Boren. <laughs> and the referee uh, finally saying something to him, which I think is more than appropriate. Maybe not on the microphone, but more than appropriate. This referee has had a very short temper with Ryan Lee, but yet he allows a player to chew out a, an opposite coach and nothing's doing, but that's just me. First and 15, unnoticed, Raylon Garrett now in. Fumble, Fumble on the ground. Raylon Garrett had come into the game in place of Jonathan Pierce to be the quarterback. 
Jarrell Reynolds, I believe, ended up covering the ball. Guys, I don't know if y'all have the stats. Um, maybe at the end of the third quarter, y'all might get some more stats, but check the amount of penalties that there's been in this game. Yeah, there, there has been. We, we can get a running total of that. We'll let it refresh and get that for you, Morgan. Garrett back into the game. Faulkner jumped off sides. There was 10 at halftime between the two teams. That was Keith Bryant again. Well, it seems like it's been about 10, <coughs> 10 penalties within the last, like, five minutes. Yeah. yeah it's 2.10 left in the third quarter. Clock moving. Second and 14 with the ball on the Faulkner 47. And this has been a, I, I want to say, a lengthy drive just from a clock perspective, it feels like. They've had the ball for a while. Raylon Garrett in the shotgun formation. He's going back to pass, and my goodness, how has he not been tackled yet? Everybody was running after him. He was able to escape it, and now he's going to get brought down on the sidelines. And he's, he's not, hurting. He's not getting up, guys. You know, I, I'm going to step out and say this, Morgan, and I may be wrong. I think Garrett was trying to take, like, one small step out of bounds and then get hit, and I may be wrong about that, but if not, then his toe just got caught on the turf over there because he stopped, and then he got tackled. It was kind of a weird-looking situation from where I sit. Why wouldn't he just throw the ball away? I yeah, mean, I look don't at know. how much yardage they lost. I, I think he was trying to pick up the, uh, the late, late hit, hit penalty yeah. and extend the drive because – he couldn't do anything else, and he that, figures he's – they've gotten just about every other call their way today, and he'd try it again. I mean, that that's just pure speculation. Um, and if I'm wrong, you guys can write to morgan.dreer at faulkner.edu. <laughs> but uh, that, that's, uh, that was an odd pause in his, in his sprint. Hey, but give him credit. He almost got sacked one Mississippi after the snap, uh, and he was able to at least – do something with it and, 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 and try and break free. I think it's third and 14. The board shows second and 14. That's an incomplete pass intended for Laquavante Gonzalez. And I can't say that I take pleasure in that because that would be unprofessional. There's a lot of uh, – of after the play mischief going yeah, on right now. Sure and is. Ryan Lee's been the only one that's gotten any sort of punishment for it. Uh, Southeastern has tripped two or three Faulkner players. Most recently, Keith Bryant just got tripped up by one of their offensive linemen. And referees give him a talking to. They're going to have to get control of this. Otherwise, this last It'll quarter is going to be ugly. Jacob McCrary barely got off the field in time. Jacob actually is catching the punt. Great punt for Faulkner. It ends up in the end zone. Give that guy credit. That was a 65-yard punt, but he needed it to be 64. So it's going to be Faulkner ball on the 25-yard line. And you're right, Carter. You know, it's the little things that add up in games like this. It's not going to be one explosive thing that happens. It's going to be a compilation of 10 smaller things that happen and you're right, you know, sometimes that is a ripe situation for a bad a, a bad, a bad, thing to happen. Yeah, because, I mean, Faulkner's chirping at Southeastern. There's a lot of shoving going on after. And in piles, I don't want to know what all's going on yeah. down there. There's, I've seen some, seen some kicks flying. I've probably been some subtle punches, all that kind of stuff to get under, under skin and try and start something bigger. Quan Bryant in the game. He is behind. Clayton Nicholas, Bryant, no handoff to him. Clayton out for the pass, and it goes incomplete. Not sure who the intended receiver was. Maybe Reagan Amos, maybe Jazeric Peterson. I think it was uh, Romel Co uh, Cochran. Uh, I think he didn't turn around the tight end. And Clayton uh, was a little upset with that, throwing his hands up, asking him why he didn't know what to do. Minute 12 left here in the third. Quan Bryant still in the backfield with Clayton. 
18 on the play clock. Four receivers. Bryant to Nicholas's right in the shotgun formation, second and 10 on the 20. Nicholas back to throw. He's in trouble, able to escape it. Huge throw on the run. And, oh, my goodness, almost got intercepted by James Swain. Jazeric Peterson was able to break up the interception. Not sure if Clayton was just trying to out throw everybody because he was possibly going to get sacked or just thought that would be the smartest thing to do. James Swain, six foot two inches tall. It's not somebody you necessarily want to get into a jump ball situation with with our wide receivers. Peterson was able to knock it away from him. Yeah, I, I think had Peterson been a couple more yards downfield or started running downfield a little bit earlier, uh, we could have possibly been gone and had a touchdown off of that. Just but when you're in a scramble situation, Peterson didn't know that Clayton had planned on bombing it downfield. So. Third and ten. Nicholas back for the quick pass over to Jacob McCrary. McCrary catches the pass, but not past the first down marker. So Clayton comes off, as do the offensive unit. Would have been fourth and two. If you're, if you're curious in and around these parts, LSU just scored its second touchdown with 32 seconds left in the first half of play. They're down 23 to 14 against Auburn. This is likely the last play of the quarter. Kick gets off clean. Received on the Southeastern 30. Quick tackle there. Actually, the play has extended a couple of extra yards. And so the fire will take over right on, I believe, the 40-yard line. Morgan, from up here, it just seems like everybody's just a little bit more intense. I don't want to say angrier, maybe, than they were in the early goings of the first half. Is that sort of the feeling you get down there? Uh, the feeling from the opening kick of this game just felt like it was going to be two physical teams. And from the start of the kick, I mean, it's, just, it's, it's played like that. And you can tell everybody is zoned in. Jonathan Pierce back into the game as quarterback. He gets absolutely rocked, but is somehow able to pitch the ball away. I'm not sure who ended up receiving it. And looking across over onto the southeastern <coughs> sideline, it looks like their other quarterback, Raylan Garrett, is uh, getting his shoulder pads and jersey taken off right now. Timeout called on the field. Now that's the end of the quarter. End of the quarter, excuse me. You know what? We're the ones that are going to take the timeout. We'll take it right now. The score is 35-28 Southeastern with a seven-point lead over the hometown Eagles, and they're driving down the field. Let's see what happens when we come back for the fourth quarter. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. Do you have an electrical ghost in your facility that's driving you crazy? You know, those little annoyances like a breaker tripping for no reason, unexplained power surges, or the lights dimming intermittently, which could indicate dangerous and costly problems unseen by the naked eye. Well, relief is here. The technicians at Crosby Electric utilize the most advanced diagnostic tools available, including an infrared camera, an ultrasonic probe, and advanced metering equipment to diagnose your electrical problem correctly and provide the least expensive repair. Should your electrical system fail after we have serviced it, we correct the problem immediately and 100% free of charge to you. Your ghostless facility will be safer, more productive, and more profitable after Crosby Electric has put your electrical ghost to rest for good. So why wait any longer? Call Crosby Electric today, 272-2085, and learn more at CrosbyElectric.com. Crosby Electric, the power of positive thinking. It's second and nine. Southeastern with the ball on their own 41. And big tackle there. Number 52, Antonio Gurley absolutely wraps up the fire running back to bring up a crucial third down. That's actually, it looks to me like it's going to be third and 12 now. 
Big down for the Eagles. Jonathan Pierce in the backfield. Pierce almost got sacked. Oh, man, he did there get it is. down. That was number 53, Cameron Ricks, who got the hand to him. Had a couple other uh, defenders helping him out. But that, huge, boy, huge sure stop. was. Man, and I thought Pierce was going to be able to peel out of it. And so with 14 0 Five, four, three left in the contest. Faulkner's going to get the ball back. Even, guys, even uh, game offensively. 439 yards for Faulkner, 424 for Southeastern. So, big drive for the Eagles. Jake and McCrary back to field the punt. McCrary on the 20. Punt's a little low. And it's going to go in front of McCrary almost 15 yards. He smartly lets it go. And it's going to be picked up at the 33-yard line. So that's where Clayton Nicholas will take over first and 10. On the day, Nicholas, 25 of 47 with one interception and 352 yards. Jonathan Pierce, 9 of 16. Raylon Garrett, 4 of 18. Joe Jones also with one throw that we know resulted in a touchdown. Clayton takes over, first and 10. He's scrambling out. Oh, my goodness. Josh Gaines had rolled out of the backfield, tossed his arm up into the air to signify that he was open. Clayton threw it to him, and it went right off the very arm he had thrown up. Yeah, I don't think Josh was expecting the ball to come in that fast. Yeah, that's fair. As Clayton had slung that ball in there, and... Still got to make the catch regardless, but I think that's why he didn't make it. Clayton back to pass, looking to throw, in some trouble, scrambling out, throwing over the top. Oh, my goodness. Jazeric Peterson, the intended receiver. I think that was nothing like that play was drawn up, but Peterson was able to get a couple of steps on his defender. Morgan Jacob McCrary just came limping out of the game. And in his place goes number 86, Eric Reeves. Certainly don't want McCrary to stay out for too many plays. I think Peterson slowed down a little bit. And had he kept running full speed through it, well, he'd still be running now. So third and 10, ball on the 33. Clayton back to pass, right over the middle. It's a first down and then some. Almost hit the referee, not on purpose. And guess who? Eric Reeves, who just came in for Jacob McCrary. I was scared there was going to be a hold in the backfield because Clayton was under an awful lot of pressure. Yeah, great catch by Reeves. And that was another one of those timing routes where the quarterback is just trusting his receiver is going to be there. And Reeves got there and made the grab. Gains in the backfield with Clayton Nicholas. 14 left on the play clock, 12.52 on the game clock. Snaps high. Gaines has it now. He's getting tackled in the backfield, and that's going to be a loss of about four, maybe five yards. You know, sometimes those high snaps seem innocent enough, but the timing of the whole play can get thrown off just by that split second. Especially when... Faulkner on first down likes to do these quick timing routes. Yeah. And when that little bit of timing is thrown off, it throws everything else off. And now someone's got to break off of their route and get open. Second and 13, Faulkner's got the ball in its own 46. Nicholas back to pass, has some time, throwing it up to Terrence Sims, who's open, and he catches. Oh, no. The ball breaks free as he hits the ground. Terrence is hurt. Well, I'm just kidding. No, he's not. He was rolling he, around a little bit like yeah. he was. But. He was in pain, but not physical. <laughs> hey, guys, Jacob McCrary walking back onto the field. Yep, I see him right there. Hey, Pat, uh, Pat Eric Reeves on the back for coming in for the injured McCrary, making a big catch to extend this drive. Terrence Sims just about had another big one. But now it's third and 13. Can't keep living with third and long like that. Reagan Amos in motion, Clayton in shotgun with three on the play clock. Clayton gets it, throws it real short to Gaines. Didn't even make it back to the 
first chain that we needed to get it past, much less the second one. So I think we resigned to that one just being a punting situation. I think so too. I mean, had a couple of uh, deep bomb opportunities that we should have capitalized on. A drop from Josh Gaines. This is, if Faulkner ends up losing this game, this will be one of those drives that we'll come back and look at that we should have had. Also, in the first quarter, Reagan's uh, drop on the sideline. Yeah. yeah, that one's for sure. There's the punt. It's going to Marquis Northington, and he lets it go, and Faulkner picks it up on the six, maybe the seven yard line. You gotta be proud of that kick. Chris Watts, the sophomore from Ringgold, Georgia. Yeah, this is the first time Southeastern hasn't had too good a field position to start their drive. That's right. And hopefully the defense can do something with it. And they've got 93 yards to drive to uh, try and extend their lead here. They're certainly capable of of driving, I don't think they've had any 93 yard drives. Of course, their first touchdown came when they started at the seven, but it was going the other direction. Pierce in his quarterback, quick handoff right up the middle to Jarrell Reynolds. Reynolds is a powerful, no, that wasn't that Reynolds, wasn't that was Reynolds. number 34. That was Mario Bell. Yeah, he's a powerful <clears throat> little runner. He just ran through and pushed uh, William Winters another two, three yards and picked up some more. Wow. The band, please stop playing during visiting team's offense statement. That's the first time I've ever heard that, but that is against the rules, so we'll take it. Pierce quick handoff there to Camario Bell, who spins and makes two Faulkner players hit each other. But Bell makes the first down. I've never heard a referee say that. That's something else. Yeah, I've, uh, I've heard it said before games, just as a reminder, no artificial noisemakers during play. But Yeah. Bell gets the ball again, and this time he's got a huge hole. Nobody can bring him down. The defensive scheme, as Bourne said, at, uh, at halftime it was there. We just didn't make a tackle. We got a tackle. Southeastern right back to the line. Faulkner had to call a timeout. I think they were about to get penalized. We'll take one as well. 10-29 left in the game. Southeastern's got the ball and a seven-point lead. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or even for just a quick snack any time of the day, a popular Faulkner spot is the Chick-fil-A located in East Del Mall. It's open from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., and it's located just down the road from the Faulkner campus. And the Chick-fil-A at East Del Mall is always looking for energetic Faulkner students to work at their location. Have a great get-together at the office, but not enough time to pick up the food? No problem with Chick-fil-A at East Del Mall. They're more than happy to bring it to you. Give Jason a call at 334-272-1411 today. He'll be happy to serve you. First and 10, Southeastern ball on their own 46. Pierce, quick handoff this time to Jarrell Reynolds. Reynolds makes his way. Faulkner's still having a tough time bringing these guys down. Uh, they're tough running running backs. They keep their legs moving the entire time until they are down on the ground. Their legs are churning. Reynolds gets it again. This time he's going to get brought down in the backfield, but there's a flag, probably a hold. Holding call on Cody McGahee. Southeastern still with the ball. It's going to be second and 14. Second and 14. Quick up to the line. Pearson at quarterback. Looks like Jarrell Reynolds to his right. Handoff right to Reynolds, and he gets brought down at the line. Good tackling there 
by Faulkner's defensive front. Actually, Mark, it has a loss of one. Good stop by the Eagle defense. So you heard it there from our PA announcer, Graham Dunn. It's third and 15. Certainly time for a hold. Not a holding penalty, obviously. Pierce, man was wide open the whole time was LaQuavante Gonzalez. He had nobody on him at the line of scrimmage. He was lined up as a slot receiver and everybody thought that it was gonna be a running play. And so Gonzalez was able to get in there and get the first down. Faulkner wasn't even set when they snapped the ball this time. Number 34, Camario Bell got the handoff. These guys move quickly to and from the line of scrimmage and Faulkner's defense is gassed. Those front guys are breathing heavy. This time it's Terrell Williams. Vandy Smith, I believe. On the carry, Williams has a touchdown for the fire. Vandy Smith brings him down. Third and six. See how tightly Faulkner plays the wide receivers. Almost went off sides. Able to bring it back. It was no contact in the neutral zone. Southeastern looking over to try and get their play call. Pierce in the shotgun. He's back and ready to pass. And it's an easy pitch and catch with his tight end. Adam Toombs. He picks up the first down, and yeah. he's hurting. Malik Meadows made the tackle, five foot eight, one seventy on Adam Toombs, who's six five, two fifty, and he's probably probably a leg injury. Yeah, he probably went right at his knees. So it's thirty five to twenty eight. Southeastern's driving with eight sixteen left. Faulkner with 452 yards of total offense. Southeastern with 499 and going. Southeastern's been penalized, Morgan, 15 times for 114 yards. Faulkner seven times for 75 yards. Southeastern's also got six more minutes of possession time. Most of that, I would venture to guess, is in the second half. And I think this is Pierce's team the way out. I saw uh, Raylan Garrett with uh, ice on his shoulder earlier, so his day's done. Low snap, Pierce able to pick it up and hand it off to Terrell Williams. And he's just able to bumble and tumble. If not to a first down, then to really close. Looks like he picked up eight, maybe nine. Quick handoff to him again, and this time he's got a lot of room to run, and he gets a touchdown. Unbelievable how practically simple these play calls are for Southeastern, but how effectively they're done. I mean, that was just a run around right side. Yeah. He set up quickly just like they've done all day and just about went untouched. So 41 to 28. Extra point makes it a two touchdown game. And it's up and it's good. So with 742 left in the game, Southeastern's gonna kick off to Faulkner on the backside of this break. And it's gonna be an absolute necessity for Faulkner to put some points on the board. Come back and join us, won't you? You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. Do you know why Guardian is Alabama's fastest growing credit union? One of the reasons is our unbeatable loan rates. How low do we go? Well, now there's an easy way to find out. Announcing loans by phone. You can actually complete your loan application in full over the phone, anytime, day or night from wherever you are. Yep, 24 seven, and you don't have to be a member. So give us a call at 244-9999 and we'll take it from there. Guardian Credit Union, where you belong. Federally insured by NCUA.
Here's the kickoff. Michael Watkins is going to receive it on the five and head north. Watkins got a little bit of a break there, but he is tackled by number 37, Phillip Smith who came sprinting east to west on the field there to make a good tackle of number five. So it's 42 to 28 with 734 left in the game. Clayton Nicholas is gonna come back in as quarterback, of course. He's 27 of 52 for 368 yards on the day. And right now he needs 68 to get Six points on the board. Nicholas in the shotgun formation. Back to throw. Jacob McCrary's wide open down the sidelines. McCrary, 5-10, touchdown. Yes, sir. So, I didn't mean on one throw he needed 68, <laughs> but we'll take it. Jacob McCrary, absolutely incredible catch. Even more impressive sprinting away from two fire defenders. And that touchdown couldn't have come at a better time. Another great play drawn up by, uh, by the guys up here in the booth next to us. That's the same catch that Jacob McCrary made a couple of home games ago that we talked about. Extra point from Curran is up and it's good. <laughs> And so just like that, with 7.24 left, the score is 42 to 34. We'll be back for the kickoff to Southeastern right after this commercial break. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. From office lunch catering to home parties, Jason's Deli has you covered. And everybody knows that the best salad bar in town is located at Jason's Deli. More items to choose from, allowing a Jason's Deli salad to truly be a meal. Located on the bypass just down from Best Buy, Jason's Deli has a menu that highlights their passion for fresh and delicious foods. And Jason's Deli is always happy to deliver. Give them a call today at 334-409-9890. That's 334-409-9890, Jason's Deli. Blake Levin ready to kick the ball to two Southeastern guys on the five yard line. It goes right in between them. And so Marquis Northington brings it down. Northington's a fast runner. He gets tripped up at the 27, 28 yard line. Good tackle there by the Eagles. John Johnson Joseph got there, a freshman defensive back from Lawrenceville, Georgia out of Mountain View High School. Able to wrap him up. 7-17, which in my songbook, Carter, is victory in Jesus. 7-17 <laughs> left in the game. 42-35. to 35. Boy, could we use a stop here. Only if there were 7-28B left, you know. <laughs> Jonathan Pierce, quick handoff to Jarrell Reynolds. And just like he's done all day, can evade people in an unbelievable fashion. Would have been a tackle in the backfield, I believe. Ends up getting positive yardage. They're gonna give him three, so it's second and seven. Southeastern's already ready to set up. Faulkner's still approaching the line. Pierce in the backfield. Guess what? A handoff to Reynolds. Positive yardage. It's the same thing over and over again. It's just a grinding system of offense Southeastern has. And Vandy Smith has to come off for a play. His helmet came off. So it'll be interesting to see who comes on for him. TJ McMiller. We only have 10 out there right now. There's number 11. Better get there. We hand off Pierce, this time to Camario Bell. Bell gets brought down by Keith Bryant. Bryant with a big tackle. Bryant tripped over him when he was trying to get up and I'm surprised it didn't get a taunting flag. 
Faulkner giving a lot of cushion to the wide receivers on the southeastern side of the field, Carter. Oh, my goodness. The ball's not even in play. What is he worrying about? Okay, the, the, he thinks the game's about him. There's no other way around it. You are allowed to play in between snaps. The ball wasn't in play. The band can play. There's another band-related statement. Surprised there's not a sideline warning for that, but it's got the crowd pumped up, so I'm okay with it. Crowd's going nuts now. 17 on the play clock. Pierce in the backfield. He's got Camario Bell right beside him. And Matthew Craig, the 6'5 tight end, as a blocker. Camario Bell gets through the first line, gets through the secondary, and gets a first down. I tell you what, that is uh, some impressive running especially when a big tight end is your lead blocker. They've already hiked the ball. Faulkner wasn't even near set. They're trying to sideline pass. It was to LaQuavante Gonzalez. He caught it, but he was out of bounds. So it's second and 10. Faulkner's trying to do some substitution here at the front. Gonzalez staying out on the sidelines. Guys, I think it's kind of obvious now, but this game's going to come down to Faulkner making a stop. Second and 10, Pierce with the ball on the eagle head. Bell in the backfield. He gets bottled up back there. Nobody can tackle him. Bell's about to score a touchdown and put the game away. Bell, five, touchdown. A 48-yard run, and he was touched in the backfield twice. Amazing. Finding holes that shouldn't be there. Camario Bell with the touchdown run. And Southeastern's an extra point away from being up 14 points. Mm. Defense, offense has done their job. Defense just hadn't been able to make a stop today. Snap, hold, kick, it's up. And it's good. Scores now 49 to 35. And whatever momentum had swung Faulkner's way is now back in the middle, if not on southeastern side. But there's still 524 left to play. Come back and join us for some of it. You're listening to Faulkner Football on FSN. in, walk out with a large $5 hot and ready pepperoni pizza from Little Caesars. When you want it, just come and get it. Hot and ready pizza. Little Caesars. Come on and get it now. Pizza, pizza. The coast is here. Wharf Cash. It's a little short. Watkins is going to have to come up and get it at the eight. Watkins trying to find a seam. He gets hit pretty hard at the 25 yard.
Prairie. But you just need yards and you got to keep the chains moving That's at right. this point. It's third and six. You got to believe, Carter, we're in four down territory. Yeah, absolutely. Down two scores. You have to go for it. Joe Jones to Clayton's left. And the clock is still rolling even though he went out of bounds. Nicholas over the middle to McCrary. McCrary goes down. It's a completed pass. Clayton got rocked by a Southeastern fire defender. And the referee stopped the clock. So Nicholas will have to come out of the game because of that. No flag was thrown. And Mason Blocker will come in for at least one play. Blocker has seen time on John Mark Stallings field before this year. And if memory serves, he's done a pretty good job subbing for Clayton or taking over in games where it's maybe a blowout. Morgan, it looks to me like Clayton's a little shaky. Yeah, he just doesn't know. Uh, I wouldn't say he knows where he is right now, but uh, he just looks a little shaken up. Uh, hopefully he can get back out there. We need him right now. Coach Boren having a discussion with the White Hats again. Hey, uh, Carter, I was just going to let you know, uh, you know, getting out of bounds, that only applies to stopping the clock when it's below two minutes. Okay. It's a good drop in. Apparently I knew that, though. He just wanted to tell you. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know. 3.55 left in the game. Clock moving now. Blocker in at quarterback. Blocker back to pass. Rushed out of the pocket. Blocker does run out of bounds. There's absolutely nobody around. That does stop the clock, though, correct, Morgan? Yeah, it should be temporarily. Second and 10. Second and 10. He ran back to the line of scrimmage. Clayton's good to go. He's back in. Joe Jones is on Clayton's right. Chances are he's in as a running back, but he does have a touchdown throw today. Blitz coming. Oh, my goodness. I mean, he just got crushed by number 58, Will Tillo, a senior from St. Augustine, Florida. They blitzed two off the corner. One of them got blocked by Joe. And then Clayton got trounced. So Mason Blocker is actually coming back into the game. To the cheers of the Southeastern fans cheering an injured player. That's very respectful. Blocker's into the game. Play clock's at 17, 16, 15. Game clock's at 245, 44, 43. Blocker in shotgun. Pass over the top to Jacob McCrary. He's caught it. Big pitch and catch there. There's that's a flag in the backfield that's going to bring it all back. That's too bad. That's just too bad. So, good catch there by Jacob McCrary. They call it. On Devontae Wilson, there was another blitz, and Wilson was in charge of getting those guys to the ground, and they threw the flag. So that's going to make it, I think, I think Morgan, that this qualifies third in a country mile. Yeah, there's only a handful of plays that you can run on a third and 30. And there's no urgency whatsoever. We've spent about two minutes. That's right. Shotgun formation. Once again, they're blitzing. And it's intercepted. And that's game. By number 24, James Swain. This, is, this has got the potential to get ugly. There's a Faulkner player down on the other side of the field. There's another flag, and then now another flag. Referee, I believe, just threw an unsportsmanlike on Swain for taking his helmet off. But there is a flag back near the original line of scrimmage. 
The injured Faulkner player, I can't see. It couldn't be farther away from me. Another Faulkner player is walking off, holding his arm. Blocker was just trying to make something out of nothing. He threw a ball into double coverage. It wouldn't have gotten a first down, but it would have set up a nice fourth down play. Basically, it just got bobbled up and intercepted by the 6-2 Swain. Listen to the referee here. So they did not score, but the penalties actually bring the ball instead of from the end zone to the Faulkner 48, which is basically where. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask your cooperation that when the ball game is over, we ask that you clear out. Basically where the interception occurred, Carter. It's kind of weird, but regardless, it's first and 10, a minute 57 left. It's going to take a Montgomery miracle to win this game now. Jarrell Reynolds gets the ball, runs up the middle, and gets at or near the first down marker. I don't know, Carter, if I've seen a better running team than Southeastern. Maybe Reinhardt, but Reinhardt did a lot of uh, they did a lot of option with theirs. Th yeah. This is just straight running the ball at yeah. you. You know, you know who's going to run the ball, and they're just they're just dominating it. Reynolds with the ball again. So tough to tackle this guy. Reynolds on the day. My goodness. He's got about 140 yards. Camario Bell's got 203. <laughs> That's not something we're used to seeing on John Mark Stallings Field. And it's not like we haven't been in position to make the tackles. No, we just haven't been wrapping them up and bringing them down. I agree. Morgan, I'm going to make the executive decision that after the game, we'll just keep it you, me, and Carter. How about that? Uh, that I feel like that's going to be the right thing to do. <laughs> Got the soccer game. Need to transition over to that. And obviously Clayton's had a stellar game out there, but I don't think Six is going to want to talk to us. Joe Jones throws a touchdown pass. I don't think 27 is going to want to talk to us. Charlie Bourne's put 35 points on the board against the number 14th ranked team in the country. But I think he's got other things on his mind too, so. Yeah, I think he's more concerned about the 49 on the other side of it than That's the right. 35 on ours. They do have to run one more play. 10 on the play clock, 12 on the game clock. They're just going to take a knee here. And that's exactly what they do. And that'll do it from John Mark Stallings Field here at Billy D. Hillier Stadium. Coach Boren still talking to the referee, and deservedly so, I believe. Referees are leaving the field. Post-game handshake taking place now at midfield. Final score, 49 to 35, Southeastern with a two touchdown win over the home team. For a team that started its program just three years ago, these guys, Carter, have really come a long way. They really have. They're a very talented team. They've got a lot of good skill position players. And that they're, for years to come, are going to be probably our biggest competition in this division as long as it remains uh, as is. Morgan, it looked like one of the better running teams that we've seen on the field in quite some time. I'm assuming that the view from down there was the same, and that can make for sort of a frustrating day uh, on the sidelines. Yeah, it, it was very frustrating down here. Um, 
as looks like Coach Bourne's having to split up a fight down on Well, the it's this same guy, number two, uh, was involved in it. Number 40 is involved in it. So, you know, I guess that just speaks to the tension I was talking about. It seems like that's just kind of been uh, a theme of the day. You know, it seemed like to me uh, there was a lot of hype surrounding this game for Faulkner. We, we needed this win. Uh, we really needed to win out to be able to have a chance to be, you know, to go into the playoffs. But, um, you know, it's very disappointing. Uh, the only team I can recall that ran the ball this effectively against Faulkner was Reinhardt. I mean, yep. just repetitive, uh, you know, just pounding it down the throat and did not stop. Uh, apparently, you know, Reinhardt, they ran the ball a lot more than – Southeastern did, but Southeastern, they, you know, it, it seemed like they were running the same exact play. Yeah. And, it, you know, we we had a few stops there, in, in, you know, in the end of the third quarter and the beginning of the fourth where it looked, you know, it seemed like we were one score away. Sure. And I think there were about two – there were two drives where our offense had it and uh, we were unable to score to tie the game. So, uh, just very disappointed. Well – we're not disappointed in you, Morgan. You did a great job on the sidelines again. I know we got one more home game, and we look forward to seeing you on November the 11th. Hey, it was good to see you. Uh, glad to have you back, Jason. I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks, man. Well, Carter, uh, I hate broadcasting games where we lose, uh, but I surely hate broadcasting games where we should have won. And sometimes those are two different things, and I think that today's game was one that we had our chances and it just didn't work out. Yeah, we definitely did. We had that drop pass in the first ha in the first quarter with Reagan down the sideline. We had several other opportunities that we that we could uh, that we had to score, but we just couldn't get it done today. And it, it it'll raise a lot of questions about the Eagles because we've played three home games against ranked teams and we've lost all three now. And and I know that's very demoralizing for the students. Uh, it's very demoralizing for the team because. The attitude around the team is they can't get it done. They can't get it done. And that's going to sting with them. And they can either do two things. They can either just roll over and and let it happen, or they can fight back and they can get better next week and they can prove, them, prove everybody wrong uh, on the 11th in our last home game. You know, that's great perspective, especially from a student, uh, about the timing of those losses, you know, being the home team. Uh, when they lose those games. So Faulkner now with three losses on the year. And as you pointed out, all of those losses were here at home. So uh, it's going to be uh, something that they're going to have to work on the next couple of weeks for sure. They travel next week, uh, have a game on October the 20th. Excuse me. I guess they – what's today? I'm real confused now Today's about the, the schedule. Because now our, our game versus Weber was – is now next week. That's right. No, no. The game, our next game will be Warner on That's the twenty right. eighth. Weber was the game that we ended up playing. Ave Maria before. was the one. Ave that was Maria moved was the one that was week. moved. That's right. So, you guys know the schedule better <laughs> than I do. So anyway, uh, certainly uh, appreciate everything that you did uh, today, Carter. It was a good game. There was a lot of action, at least for us to call. Certainly, a lot of offensive yards gained by both sides. But, Absolutely. Uh, Faulkner comes up short for its first ever. Sun division lost, and uh, hopefully uh, the season will work itself out. So when we come back together on Veterans Day, November the 11th, we'll have some good things to talk about that. But until then, we hope you check out uh, the broadcasts of, of the games. Maybe the, uh, uh, the visiting teams are going to be broadcasting those games if we're not able to get down there. And we certainly appreciate your support of Faulkner Athletics. Carter, enjoyed being with you today. And hope that uh, the two soccer games tonight go well. If you're a Faulkner sports fan, hope you'll come back and tune in to tonight's men's and women's soccer matches against the visiting team from Bethel. Uh, but until then, we hope that you've enjoyed this broadcast of the Faulkner Sports Network. As we mentioned, the sad news today, Faulkner loses by 14 to uh, Southeastern Fire from Lakeland, Florida. Uh, but we certainly hope Coach Charlie Bourne and his Eagles have a great rest of the season, and we look forward to catching back up with them for our last game, home game of the year on Saturday, November the 11th. Until then, go Eagles. You've been listening to Faulkner Football on FSN.